I'm interviewing Joe Malak at his home in Ascot Vale in Melbourne. It's the 27th of August 1984. Sure. Uh, in, what was, when were you born? In, uh, in uh, 1904. What part of Gozo was it? And was it a large family? Oh, we were, yes. We was, a, uh, we was 11 kids. But we lost four, like, four dead. And uh, we, we, it's still living like there was living seven. Seven kids. What, what did, how did the four die? Eh? What happened to the four? The four died. I, I only remember one because they died before me. Like, three of them died before I was born. And one died between me and uh, Mary, I think, who I was little. I remember it because it's a way, you know, the little, uh, what do you call them? Cars. Car. What were the names of the seven? Seven, there is uh, Jesse, me, Joe, uh, Mary, Nina, Mick, Charlie, and Lou. My dad. <laughs> For how long did you live in Gozo? Oh, I, we was, I was about between 11 or 12 years old when I went to Malta myself. And the rest of the family were all from well, Gozo? I was in Gozo for a while, for about six months. I was living with my uncle in, in Valletta. And uh, the, were your parents uh, happy with you from Gozo? Yeah. Yes, all Gozo. What were their names? Like my father, Sam, my mother, Loretta. Laura, Laura, they call it, I think, but uh, we call her Loretta. She was in the chair. Merchia, that's right. And uh, what was the name of the family that you were Oh, we started about six, six years old, I think. And uh, I was about 11 years when I finished school. I, I went off school. I went to Malta working. And at that school, what, what did you learn? Oh, I learned uh, Maltese language, Italian, and a bit of English. Any other No, no more. Things? Because you have to go different class, so, you know, like in another city. The zone was what school where I was. So you went to school in uh, the, the what they call it uh, government, but the Catholic school, you know, like. So what was your first job? So my job was in a, in a green grocery, what they call it, everything, like sugar and everything, all these things, and fruit and vegetables. That was in nineteen. In the war time, in the war, in the First World War, it'll be about 1915 or something. And your uncle owned the green grocers? No, no, I was working for, for this fellow. They, they had no kids themselves, and they wanted me, you know, like 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 their kid. And uh, what was your first Hours of work and the rights of pay? Yes, well, well uh, I, I only was 12, say 12 year old. And uh, I used to be like their son. They'd give me, he used, they used to give my father or my mother some money you know, all the time. And give me a few bob for myself. And I used to go, uh, well, the, the soldiers, you see, the Australian soldiers in New Zealand used to come all over there where I work, and I used to supply him with the things because the boss couldn't talk English and the, the wife, his wife can't talk English. And I used to uh, be selling, selling the stuff for the soldiers, the troops. You know, apples and uh, for bananas, tomatoes, long, you know, the long table tomatoes. Yes, yes. They loved it, they eat too, I get it. So, so you met Australians in Oh, yes, yes. 
Australians in New Zealand. But were there many of them? Oh, yeah, well, they, they used to bring them there, the wounded, all all the more time. They had a big uh, hospital base there. And how, what did you think of them? Oh, they used lovely blokes. I used to get there, some of them, uh, you know what, they get the hat with the medal here. Oh, yeah. I used to get some of them. It's Blouch good hat. to me, yeah. Oh. In New Zealand, blokes. So, at a young age, you, hey? at a very young, you were very young, oh, yeah, you met yes, people yeah. from Australia. Did, That's right. Do you think that influenced? your uh, decision to go to Australia? No, no, no. Just that's, that we made our mind. I tell you what's happened. And I done four years in the grocers. And they don't want me to leave, to leave, uh, to leave the shop. When I come here, now I went for, with the ferry boat for six years after that, four years with them. And I went with the ferry boat, what you see in the, in the photo there, the ferry boat. I worked there six years. And uh, I come here then after that because we was going to make uh, examination for a captain to drive the ferry boat because the captains who got there they could understand the word of English, see, and uh, you know the battleships, the destroyers, and that will come used to come there to the harbour, Slima. And they blow the whistle like to stop you, stop and let them go through or anything like that. They don't understand it. You have to tell them, see? And then we got the books and everything ready to you know that around the coast of Malta. And when we are learned, the orders come that uh, you have to be like a doctor and everything to go, to go as a captain on the ferry boats, see? And then we said, well, we changed now. One said uh, we was about six of us. One said we go to Australia. I said to Australia. Another bloke said to America, and we decided then to come here. See? And you worked with them on the ferry? Uh, yes, some of them. So, uh, we was four together there, worked together, and we was ready for the captain. We, got, we passed from everything by the just change the rules. And, and were, they, were you all single? Oh, well, yes, all single. Uh, young fellas like I was. See, some of them might be two years older than me, you know, that's all. <coughs> that's uh, very interesting. I want to ask more about that. Yeah, uh, ask any time you want. But, but uh, going back, returning for a moment to uh, your parents. Uh, yeah, my parents. What was their occupation? What did they do? My father. Well, my father. They, they were doing women on the work there. My father used to be on the sea all the time, on the English boats, you know, from England to Malta to uh, India, all them places, Portside and all them things, say like Russia. My it's father used to be like that. Hey? Merchant seaman. Merchant seaman, that's right. We used to see him say, uh, when, when they call to more, they'll be there for a couple of, two or three days, see? Well, you can see the kids, it's all two years behind, between. Oh, yeah. See? Okay. They're all, all between. But were, are you the uh, oldest? Child? No, I had my sister, uh, mix, mix mother, was the oldest, two years older than me. And so you were second? Second. And uh, did, did you, did Grand, uh, your father ever uh, go to Australia, do you know? My father been here, been here but on the sea, on the boats. Because I remember tell, he told me once, you know, told me, told me on the letter that he'd been here as far as West Australia. See? What sort of ship was he on? What English boats, all English boats. and. Uh, I couldn't tell you the name of the boat because I know, you know, I know when the war started, he was on a German boat, on a, on a German boat with the pumps on it for when any boats got on fire, nice. they would do that. And they kept him tied there in Portside for, a, for a, I think, two weeks and then let him off, let the, let the boat come to Malta, get the Malta screw off it and, the, you know, they got it. I remember that. So when would he have 
come to uh, Australia uh, on, on a sh ship. Me? No, him. Uh, it would have been before the war. He came here while I was here. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Well, I was here, but I, I, I couldn't, you know, go to West Australia at that time. He was. So that would have been the late twenties. Mm. It'll be, uh, it'll be the late twenty. You, you came in twenty-four. I don't know. When in twenty-four, and I, I wasn't here. I wasn't here when he, when he came here on the boat. Because I remember telling me that there might be the letters inside there somewhere, but um, might be not. And uh, he says, he says, I, I've been in Australia. He says, but uh, West Australia, I said, well, that's a long way from yes. there. <laughs> so, Would he have understood that? Especially that time. And uh, you were there in contact with Australians did you have uh, in Malta before in Malta, coming? In Malta I had with the English and all, because on the ferry, well, the, the shop there, all the English come there, because there's one shop there with the green grocery and everything, but behind, opposite the government palace, see? Big shop used to be. And uh, then the supermarket and next, the meat and, and all stuff, but they used to come stop in our place in, in the shop to buy anything, fruit and uh, tomatoes, mostly tomatoes. <laughs> they used to have a lot of tomatoes and bananas. Were these English or Australian? Oh, Australian, English, they, you know, they all used to bring them there. But you can tell the Australian from the English because different, uh, uh, you know, the thing on them. Different uniforms. Uniform. Mm. And you, you mentioned before about uh, Captain Cormier. And yeah, Captain Cormier. That, so that before, before he came here, Captain Cormier, he used to be uh, captain on the, uh, in the war. And my father, I think, he, I remember he said to me once, that, uh, you know, he used to talk about Captain Cormier was the captain, see? And he served with Captain Cormier? Who? The grandfather? My father, father. my father, yes. With the boats, I in the boats. Do you remember where they were? Well, I couldn't tell you where they were, because in the war time, if it be in the war time, you would uh, nobody tell you where they are. Say, not supposed to. Say. And I, at that time, I was a bit big. And Mick, Mick is to be little. Mick is uh, younger, about seven years younger than me. And he is the uh, he used to can go with my father on the boat. Say, but I can't. I was too big. <laughs> say, these uh, then. That time, that's in the war time then, my father had a, it was a boatswain on a trawler. They had two man, man sweepers that were, with the net behind them. You know, two, two boats mm -hmm. with the net behind them to cut the mines. Yes. And my father was on, there, on them too, oh. see? And that would have been a Navy. So he like a Navy, Navy, but he wasn't in the, uh, like no Navy clothes on him. Like seamen, like uh, ordinary, what do you call them? Merchant. Merchant, not merchant. Then. Did, what other memories do you have of uh, your father and mother? There's nothing as far as I know. My father always was on the sea. My mother just <laughs> house, what do you call her? Housewife. Housewife, see? There in Gaucho, there's no, uh, even a mortar. She always looked after the kids, you know, what I mean, my mother. Well, it was a very big family. Oh, yes. So you, you had two jobs in Malta, one yeah. with the grocer, one with the One with, with the ferry boats. I had the, I had the, that was six years. Six so years of the ferry boats. What, what did you actually do on the ferry boats? Well, I do first, I got a job because I only was still young too, you know, on the jetty. You know, when the ferry comes in, when the ferry comes in, 
Yeah, somebody had to be there to give you the rope to tie up, to stop it, say. And uh, then uh, when I, when they see me strong and that thing like that, the boss then says to the manager, he says, what are you leaving a bloke like that there? He says, when I need them there for, to paint the boat, the ferry boats. He says, you can take them if you want to. I said, I don't want to go there. <laughs> I have to stop here. And you know, I had to go there. I had to go painting, like uh, took me painting and everything, and do everything. Then even uh, in the do we had a little dockyard in, uh, in Valletta under the hospital there. And uh, we used to have, a, now and then we have a ferry about there and to clean underneath and everything, you know, like underneath is all copper, you know, wood like, and then copper. And you clean the copper, you know, from the grass, uh, like a bloody garden underneath there, see? And we used to be there, and uh, I kept there all the time. Then uh, every week, like the weekdays, Saturday and Sunday, I have to change the blocks on the ferry boat, the sailors. See, your, your turn to go on holiday for a couple of days or two and a half days, I'll change your, you. And then I change the other bloke, and then the other fella, and after that, the rest for myself. See? So you also. I've been in everywhere. And if there's any picnics, like picnics around Malta, or to St. Paul's Bay, what they call St. Paul's Bay there. Well, I used to go, that special ferry, I used to be the seaman there, see, on it. They have a fireman, seaman, uh, sailor like, and they are the captain and the engineer, see. I see, and uh, after that job, you were working with the Well, you left that job in order to come to I left it to come here, yes. At that time, what was your position with your, the rest of the family? Like, uh, were other members of the family working? No, none of them. None of them. The others were all smaller than me. They, they had Mary. Mary was used to work for the Admiral in Malta. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She had a good job in there. But what did she do there? Well, like a housemaid, is it they call them? A domestic. Yeah, there was uh, something. Did she cook at home? Hey? Cool. No, I don't think so. As far as I know, she she used to be, and then they used to come when they when have, we have a dance in Slima, there in opposite the ferry boats. There, the uh, she used to be with the English girls there all the time. Uh, you know, the ball they got the ball and all. She used to come, uh, but after that, I know nothing about them any, anymore because I've been here. See, I come here. It must have been a difficult decision to leave Malta at that time. Is that right? Did you have to think about it much? Or? No, no, I never thought at all. Just decide, we decide. And then uh, we uh, see my father. See, my father never speak much, like I am now with my kids. See, she's in charge of the kids. <laughs> see, my father is, uh, I don't think he'd say 20 words to me or me. Anyhow, he said, uh, he says to my mother, he says, why don't you get him to join the police if, instead of go to Australia, see? Well, my, my mother took me there to the police station, no, to the, the depot. And uh, they took my name, they took everything there. I said, I'll satisfy him, you know. And then I met my uncle, going out from there, and I met my uncle. And he said, my, ma my, fa my mother's brother, he was a policeman. And he says, where, where are you coming from? You know, I did, shook hands with me and everything. And my mother was there. My mother used to come with me anywhere I go. And uh, I said, I said, she wants me to get in, in the police force. He says, get away from the police force. He says, go to anywhere else. He says, we'll get the police force. And I said, I'm taking your, your advice. <laughs> and I did that. And then nobody know, my mother don't know what I fixed up the passport. I used to get that passport. I'll tell you how I got that passport. When I, the, the, um, the boats, uh, the manager, nobody else know, by a captain 
and the seamen and the firemen. I used to be the sailor, see? Well, I used to, we used to go every, every, every month or three weeks, we used to, ho to go from Slima to Valletta in Main Harbour, change the ferry boat. Yeah, you would give them a clean one and we'll get a new uh, old one. You know, like there to want to clean it and paint it. Well, by the time I was there, I used to go to the immigration office department and uh, I told them I want to go to Australia and told me what to do. And the fella said, uh, can, you speak, can you speak English? Yeah, Maltese like. I said, yes. Anyhow, he started talking to me. He said, you know more than I do. <laughs> Anyhow, he says, you're all right. He says, you go to the court, get the uh, certificate, you know, like from the uh, character. character. He says, go to the doctor. I went to the doctor. I got all the things that they are in the passport. And uh, he says, and then I come here and we'll fix you up, see? But who was this person? Was there an immigration department? The immigration department. In Valletta? I used to sneak here, yes, that's where the, the, the place was. I used to sneak there and go back to work. There used to be to a toilet there, but I changed my clothes. <laughs> and uh, then I had to go examine again, and I passed it from that, and they sent out the paper. And they had there want me to go with the English boat to come here. And he said, uh, look, he said, uh, in Australia, spend the money there, see? It's a bloke. He know, I know him because he used to live in the same hotel, uh, the head of the immigration, and he knows my father. He said, what do you want to leave the ferry boats for? I said, well, I said, I changed my mind. I said, I want to go away somewhere, see? Anyhow, he said, you have to pay 40 quid he says, you have to go with an English broad. I said, how much is the fare? He says, 40 quid. I said, I can't. He says, you can borrow some money. And then he says, you get plenty of money there, you know, like kind of like that. I said, what about lend me yourself some money? You know, and stop <laughs> this. He says, he says, you'll get money if you want it. You know, I, mean, I was joking myself, like, mm. but uh, anyhow, I said, no, I said, uh, I'm not going with that. I said, I'm going with the, with the French boat. The French boat? To France. Yeah, I went, I went to France. And uh, he says, oh, you can't do that. I'll you give you the passport. I said, you'll give me the passport, all right. Don't worry. I said, did I pass for everything? He said, yes. He said, but you have to go with the English boat. I said, no, bloody lie. I said, the French boat with the French used to be 21, 21 quid. And the, the English, because he'll get so much out of it, see? I see, yes. See, anyhow, anyhow, I got there one day. I lose, you know, losing my time like that. I went there and I said, uh, I said, what's his name, Palisa? Oh, I forgot his name now, after all that time. I said, what, I said, is he in there? He says, he's busy. I said, well, I'm busy too, but I knocked at the door and never answered, I pushed it up. I, I find the, him with the priest having a cup of coffee. <laughs> so he, I said, that was your bloody well busy. I swear it like that, you know, I was wild. Anyhow, he said, what do you want? I said, give us that bloody passport. I said, I said, be coming in here a long time now. All right, it's your own way, and gave it to me, <laughs> see? And that's when he's dead. And then I told the manager, they have to give him one notice, you know, like. I told the manager, I told my mother, and uh, took a month off myself there before I come here. Uh, do you remember the name of the person you dealt with in immigration? No, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you the name of the bloke, no. I think the superintendent at that time was Casalani. Casalani, Henry Casalani. But you probably you wouldn't have dealt with him directly, I suppose. No, but the big one, I think, because there is two blokes, and then you go to the big one. So, well, what did the doctors check when you went for the medical? Oh, yes, just for everything. Thorough examination. Yes, oh, yes, I got right through. And then, uh, 
I still got the day somewhere in there. I got the passport, I think I still got the day. What's the match? And then, anyhow, then from there, I got the, we got the, I got the boat on Friday night, October the 10th, I remember, from, uh, from Valletta, the steamer, to go to Sicily. And from Sicily, we got there in the morning. Uh, at 11 o'clock, we got the train, and the train went to Italy through the, uh, on the ferry, you know, they, yes, uh, they yes. go right on the ferry, because the sea. And we went there, we got there in Marseille's at uh, Monday night. That's from uh, Friday night till Monday night to get there. Change about six times the trains. See, to get to uh, France border, Whitley border. And then uh, we got the friends there and that took us to Marseille. And then we stopped there a couple of weeks in France because the boat wasn't uh, clean enough. You know, like they had to clean everything. Yeah. And then we left there, we got to, to got six weeks to come here. Uh, when you say we, you mean you and the French? Friend, yeah, yes. Yeah. There were four friends. Yeah, there. about six all together, no one another on the boat. Were they from the same part of Gozo? Or no, so, yeah, some of them from Gozo, some from Slima. Would you remember their names after all this time? Or? Oh, the, no, we, we, don't, we don't go by. Mail and that. Oh, the nicknames. Yes, Joe there, Joe Paul, Paul like me. I got, we got, we got an Nancy. Yes, what does that mean? Yeah, right? hey. What is the Nancy? The Nancy is not, is, is a trap. Oh. And more, see, it's see, it's see. The, the trouble is, my my father the Nancy, and my mother the Gajo. Gotcha. Catch. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yes. That's how it is. Well, can you tell me their nicknames? Because I, I may meet other people who. Oh, knew yeah. Them or, you oh, know. yeah. But I want to know. Uh, you, you forget this bloody name, you know what I mean? Yes. Whereas I know Tony and Charlie and Paul. And we had a couple of them from Nadu, they call it Nadu there on, in Gozo. Two brothers. One, four, six, we had about a. It was ten, I think, altogether. And you more, you made the decision together, like talking about. Not it all of them, no, we only was five together here in Morton. The others was mostly all in Gozo, see, or, and, and the other suburbs, see, and happened to be the same time coming with oh. us here, see. And were they all uh, labourers, or...? Oh, yeah. And borrowed the money to...? I couldn't to tell you, I couldn't tell you, I mean, of course. I never borrowed no money, but uh, some of them might, see, so but uh, you, you don't know, you never ask, you know, what I mean, them things. So, did, did people talk much about immigration in Malta? Oh, some young, young fellas do, used to. I don't know now, because they reckon now is a different place altogether there. If it's true, you know, because I've never been there. But when you were, you know, in the 20s, early 20s, People talk about it much. Oh, yeah, a few used to talk about going away, America, and everything. Even from here, I was going to America from here. And, you know, it was set for me and changed my mind, I never went. <laughs> it, well, what, what about Australia in the 20s in Malta? Did you hear much about Australia? Oh, yes, because a lot of Maltese used to be here. And they go to retire and finish, you know, like some of them sick or something like that. See, and, uh, but we, uh, we decided to go to Australia and that's it. See, never take notice of nobody else. But did you know any Maltese who had been in to here. Australia and returned no. to Malta or no. they were here? No, I, I know they was here, but I, they never spoke to them, like. But one fellow told me he was here, 
and that's what I want to see how the dear in America friend of ours. And his brother was here, his older brother is dead now. He says to me, don't be thinking you go to pick up the money from the ground when you get to us, how do you say? What, he, wrote remember, you, eh? he wrote you a letter from Australia? Or? No, I met him in Slima, like. Oh, so he, he told me, he told me. He'd been here himself before and went yeah, to Malta. Ah, see. see? And he says, you got the... Uh, he said, don't think you're going to pick the, all the money, for, the money from the floor, from the ground, see? What had he done out here? I couldn't tell you. I think they'd be working in the Port Perry, or what they call it. You know, where the lead is. Oh, yes. You know, they... Uh, in the mine. Lead broken head in the mine, I think, somewhere. Port Perry, I think it's Port Perry. Uh, Port, Port Perry, I think they call that place. So he would have come out very early. Yeah, he was early, I know. There was a couple of blocks came came there. I, I was a kid, I was smaller and uh, younger. They had the lead in, the, in their body. They were sick. I remember t talking, you know, people talking. I didn't know what it was myself, led from Port Perry that I reckon used to work. The, the, the older bloke, uh, do you remember his name? This one, no, I don't. But his brother, his brother, there's a letter from him, from America, his brother, look. No, I think she threw it out. What's his brother's surname? Uh, Saliba. Oh, Saliba would have been Saliba. Eh? Yes, it'd be Saliba. There he is. Do, do you remember when you first heard the word Australia? When did you first hear anybody mention Australia? Oh, I used it all the time, because before that, a long time ago, when I was a kid, and my father used to be in the bloody barracks working in the coffee shop. And he used to say to me, uh, I used to go to school, like, I was uh, little. And uh, he used to say to me, you sit on the step. He says, when you hear the soldiers coming singing, let me know. <laughs> he used to get drunk, see? Yeah. The English heard that. And if they see the light, they want to come in, say, and they smash everything. And I used to go to remember and tell my father, uh, they sing in the head. <laughs> and then what would they do? He would put the light off and shut the door, close the doors. Used to be my father and another father run the coffee shop, see? That's how I remember that. <laughs> so now I used to sit on the step there waiting for the... And these were English? And there's the black Soldiers. The blocks in America, look. Ah, yeah. Yeah. He's about 86 years old now. Gee. See? So what about uh, uh, Australia? Uh, when did, what would your father mean to say these were Australian soldiers coming? Or? No, he never said nothing. He just, he say, he just said when they singing. I was drunk. Maybe he was drunk, see? So what did, what did you think Australia would be like? When, uh, see, I was young, I never thought of anything. I thought it would be like Morla, you know what I mean? Well, I never had complaint to do here. I got a good job for I wanted. Like, uh, there was a job I, I got here in November. In November, I think, in the end of November, we got here, and there was holiday Christmas. After Christmas, I went to work. See? But did you, what image, what, what did you think Australia would be like? Like, what you had heard in Malta about Australia? Uh, well, I never hear, not, uh, you never hear much about it, because we young fellas, we got together. We don't, we don't, no, none of them know nothing about our no. See? And don't you know what, uh, what that blog told me and, uh, you know, the other blogs. I, I had a blog here, my father uncle here in Australia, but I didn't know where he was. He was in Melbourne too. 
he was in Melbourne, he was working in the glassworks. See, and uh, when we got here, we got in the dock, in the Victoria dock, we're number seven dock, we got in the French boat. I remember, uh, and then we got a taxi, we got a hub to uh, King Street. There's the Maltese barber there, see? And that's uh, where we got everything done from there then. Well, what was your uncle's name? Which uncle? The, the one who was here. That's my father. That's sorry, uncle. father's uncle. Yeah, Joe's, Joe's, Joe. What's Joe? Joe's his name is Shaklun, I think. Well, he would have come out very early. Eh? He would have been out very Oh, yes, early. yes. But more, again, got married after. <laughs> Before was the war, nice. would he have come, do you think? Eh? Before World War I? No, I think it, would, it wouldn't be that old. Or, you know, it'll be old now, because uh, he was young for my, uh, for my, it be my father and uncles. Did you see what I mean? But he was, he, when I come here, he was like young fella, you know. So the others who you came over with, did they have any contacts here? Did any relatives or friends? Which one? The, the, the other five or six? Uh, no, the other one only, uh, this one, two, three died. Only this three died. Three or four. One went to mortar again and died there. He got married and then some they again died. That was second cousin, second cousin of mine too. And the other cousin here that uh, that uh, that came here before me, a couple of years before me. The other one, he's dead too. Did they have any any friends in Australia? when they were coming over no, on the boat. No, no, no. So you had the, nobody to come to? We had nobody. But we we got there. Uh, there was, you know, a few more things here, like I, like I said before. And then there'd be in the club. They used to have the club in King Street. Well, that barber shop, they called him Charlie Chaplin. So I got the photos there somewhere. He used to be, he used to be a barber in Malta, in the barracks for the soldiers, see? And when uh, when I got here, he, he remembered me, because I used to go and get the tobacco f from my father to him. See, my father had the tobacco in, in the coffee shop and everything. And he said, go and get some uh, plug of tobacco, you know, for me. San Julian tobacco, they used to call it. And I used to say the, the opposite word, you know, like. And, uh, well, there was a, a, a place in Latrop Street, in Latrop Street, going to the railway side there, mm -hmm. down a bit. And that's where we used to live, the Irish people, and uh, I had a room with, uh, with uh, another Maltese fellow. We all, you know, lived in there for a while. And then we went on uh, working. Someone there and someone there. Because that time was a lot of work here. Yeah? On the roads and everything, you can work anywhere. What, what was the barber's position again? He, he had a club. He no, a no, he had the, the shop in the corner of King Street and Letter Street, like that. See? And they all know him because when I know him more than, well, you know, in Gozo even, because he's from Gozo too. Do you remember, remember his name at all? Yeah, uh, no. Angelo Bello. Angelo Bello, yeah, that's his name. We call him Charlie Chaplin. See, but uh, that's his name. He, he come from Ancelum himself too, because he used to be in the barracks. And the barracks is Ancelum, on that side of that church there. It's a big barracks now. They they hold it now for the old people. Oh, yes. See. So uh, you mentioned the, the, the club before. Yeah, yes. There used to be a club down a bit from King Street. But it, that's where the Maltese meet, like the other people, you know. I mean, they all got clubs, Maltese, Italian, Greeks, or bloody Germans. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, a good thing too. But mm. did, did they 
was this actually a Maltese club? Like, was it called the Maltese club or called the George no. club? They never yes. called that the time. George club or they, never, they never used to call anything that time. There's a club, couple of tables, a billiard table in there, and the others playing cards, and used to serve lemonade, and I think used to have beer too there. Because it used to be a hotel before too, that one. Was it a large place? Oh, yes, like a hotel. It was a hotel before. And was the whole place used by the Maltese? Yeah, yeah. yeah people used to live there, sat on top, you know, like on the, on the, on the top floor. And it was in King Street? In King Street. In King Street and Lathrop Street. See, uh, that's Lathrop Street and this King's coming up, see, like that. And the, this hotel here. And this barber here in the corner. So there would have been a, like King Street would have been a... Uh, an Main part for the Maltese. Yes. 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 And, uh, then, see, all our letters used to come to the, to the, to the Maltese fella. See? And then he made a parcel, like he knows, he knows where we are like in uh, Mount Sabine or somewhere where I used to work, well, the letters come about six, eight together. Mine and yours, and, and that you used to send them over there, see? Well, I know it's a long time ago, but yeah. do you remember his name? Yeah, that, that and, uh, see, we call him Charlie Chaplin. See, all knows him by Charlie Chaplin. Oh, so the barber? Yeah, the barber. The, uh, the oh, uh, no, 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 not the club. This is the barber. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the barber, they, they all call him Charlie Chaplin, see? Uh, and his name is Angelo. Angelo, well, uh, I told you a minute ago, I think, Angelo, Angelo Bello, Bello. That's his name, that's his real name, Angelo Bello, see? And he used to redirect the uh, mail the, 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 I I uh, I give him home his address, see, and uh, you the same, and the other one the same, and uh, when they when they come, like he knows that we work in one place, four of us or three. Well, he put the three letters together, say the names, oh, see, oh, yeah, and then he put them there, see. And if before Christmas or before Easter, he, he knows that we're coming down. Well, we send the letter to him and tell him to keep the letters because we're coming down on holiday, see? That's how we used to work it. And was he involved with the club at all? No, no. Uh, yeah, he used to play with billiard. He used to go and play billiard because one day somebody said something to him and hit, hit him hit him with... The, with the bloody billiard stick on the, the split it on his head. <laughs> and did they, uh, in the club, I suppose, they talked Maltese? Oh, Maltese yeah, it's all Maltese, it's all Maltese language. Was there news from Malta discussed? No, no. I never used to, uh, because I wasn't, I wasn't a gambler. I never was a gambler. I used to go, I used to go there. Well, the first two years I never been anywhere there. It's only to the barber, and now, like in the city, like not in the clubs or anything else. See, till I got used to it, and then when I got used to it, well, I used to go there, if I'm waiting, well, I had the room on Miss Aldag and the, and the Irish people there in Lathrop Street. Well, you can't stop in the line, and there you have to go to wait, is it? And uh, I used to go to the club there, and might see another block and play billiards with him. See, like that. But gamble, I never gamble. Uh, sometimes I might put a quid, what they play, the bakara, what they call, held a goal, might win 50 quid and get out, get out, get out with it, see? <laughs> uh, I'll have a, an hour to sphere, like I'd be waiting for here to come. See, that time the trends used to uh, start at one o'clock in the, in the afternoon Sunday. And they can't be, be back about half past one today, say in William Street. Well, I have to go there and meet again when the train stop. And William Street and Lothrop, and Lonson Street. And uh, 
Then they only have you go about your hair, say pictures or anything like that. Getting back to the uh, this club, uh, so there would be like a boarding house there too. Their rooms would be rented. There's a few rooms, few rooms, yes, so few rooms over right there. The Maltese people. But not not feeding there. The feed used to be a cafe next door. Again, there's a cafe in New Zealand block. We're still on it. Yeah, I used to have their breakfast. I used to go when I work in, when I finish from the bush, like working in the bush. I used to work in the quarry. Well, I used to have breakfast there in uh, in this cafe in New Zealand. Fellow Frank, Frank is the name. I couldn't tell you the other name. And. Uh, we used to make lovely lunches and we just still, you know, with only one and three, one and three, four of them big sandwiches there. Yeah, we used to go there for tea and all. And then finish up, I go to a Greek place for just uh, like a good cafe, you know, Greeks. But what about uh, in the club on occasions like the National Day, Malta's National Day, or uh, Never motion. Or say a birthday party or never motion there. They used to have the dance after a while when I was married then they used to have the dance. We used to go to the dance like take uh Eunice, you know, like we only had Eunice that time. And uh, they used to have the dance and they used to go like Sambri, you know, when they made that feast up there, or in the beach you got a lot of uh, Buses, you know, a few buses with the tickets, and we'll, we'll go there for a day, picnic like that. But, but this club was actually... No, the club never interested me at all. Never interested me. So, uh, see, what I'm thinking is to have, to have kept the club going, it must have had a fair few members. Or oh, yeah, no members. Uh, it's, it's gambling in the, there. In the 20s. It's, it's gambling there, gambling. See, back around, see. That's where the money was. Yeah. <laughs> see, because yeah, you really got caught once with nothing. I never even knew there was, uh, you know, gambling in there. I went there for the billiard, for the, the billiard sitting in the front room, and the bloody squad cam police, all with the bowler suits on, who went in, looked all over, had a few beers, and they <laughs> broke, the, broke the thing, and uh, and uh, he come out. The couple, the sergeant come out. He says, "All right, boys, you're right. You can go home. You Never let us out. I, it's time for me to get out to, to meet her." Then after that, I never went there anymore. Did, did you uh, ever hear anything mentioned about? the uh, New Caledonian Maltese? No. I'm not in, I know that a lot of French trainees used to go out there, because on the boat we had about 50 of them. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, so well, being a French boat. Yeah. So. We had uh, young ones, you know, sailors like, and uh, I had to see what's happened on the boat. I had to work on the boat. Even I pay my fare because the steward we had was crook. He took the, the woman, I think, or something. That's what he told, he told me. And uh, he couldn't do the job, and I had to do it. Do the he order the bread and order the thing and look after the table. I had uh, uh, six six uh, sailors, uh, French blokes, you know, trainees, six. We had three Indians and me. We have to get the everything ready for the table to feed the Maltese, you know, about, the, about six tables there, and fix it, get all the wine and get everything like that, see? What, what was the name of your ship? I forgot to ask. Mm. Villa de Strasbourg. Sorry? Villa de Strasbourg. Strasbourg. Mm. That's the name of the boat. No, the, the boat that I was uh, wondering if you'd heard about was called the Gange. It was a French mail boat. In 1916 it came 
Yeah, yeah. Turned away, uh, I would turn away. Mm. Oh, that time I remember talking, I hear them talking about that. That's when the war started. They taken the truth from here and bring the foreigners here, and they kept them off. Yes. yes. There was few more teas on it that boat, but I was too little to, you know what I mean. But I heard about it. What you, when you were in Malta? Yes, yeah. yes. That I think I think the Prime Minister was there. Uh, oh wait on now. Uh, Billy, Billy Hughes, that's him. That's him. See, he took all the bloody troops from here and they bring in the foreigners here. That's right. There was a lot of Maltese on, on coming that time. Um, but they let them land after. Yeah. Maltese priest helped him. Something like that. Mm. You didn't meet any people from that boat uh, when you were in Melbourne? Or? Oh, I know some, but uh, they did now. Uh, did they tell you about it? Hey? Did they ever tell you what happened? Yes, yeah. It's yeah. that, uh, that only, you know, what I was only just said there, lucky thing to bring us back, you know, that means they're getting back. Yeah, Frank, Frank Farrugia was one of them guys. What? Old Frank Farrugia. What for? When he came here and they refused him to land uh, in the wartime. That's one of them. He passed away. Yeah, he died there. He got a son. I don't know, I've never seen his son now for a while. I think he's an ad like this. His son dies. Young Frank. Do you remember what uh, Frank Farrugia used to Say about what happened? No, I never. That uh, is only that. They said they uh, bloody. Because people said uh, they keep taking all, you know, the truth from here and they're bringing the foreigners here, see? And they brought everything at that time, everybody. Maltese, Italian, every bloody nation. So, why would you say you uh, didn't meet any was there any one particular reason? Me? Yeah. Oh, I left because I couldn't get the job I wanted. See? See, we was four blocks there. That's, uh, we studied for this one. See? Studied for the captain. We got the books and everything from the commissioners and all. And when you got everything in the past, change everything, well, see? We said that's it. There's no, uh, there's no other job there, see, the, and then we decided to come here. Yeah, well, I wanted to ask about that. How, mm. What was life like in Malta in, oh, in those days? Do, like, as far as I could say, it's good life there. See? It's low standard, but it's a good life, you know, because you don't know any different. See, but I mean, there's a, like a block here in Melbourne, never, never went to Apollo Bay or something. He doesn't know what's up there, see what I mean? It did the same, uh, the same there. Well, in Gozo, in Gozo, they had no paper or anything. No newspaper or any uh, things like that. I remember when there's no light at all in the street even. You have to put the kerosene in the street. And you put the lamps, you know. So, the French ship, Villa de Strasbourg, that boat. That's uh, the name of it. There were how, how many people on board altogether, and how many of those were Maltese? Well, oh, there was it be about 35, 40 Maltese in it. We had a place for uh, Maltese only. The others had uh, some other Greeks or what they are, or all nations they bring in. Were they Greeks? Hey? Some were Greek. Oh, yes, Greeks and uh, some Italians and some other Romanians, I think, or some sort of uh, like that. Yugoslavs. Oh, Yugoslavs, too. They all, uh, they come from everywhere. Uh, are all headed for Australia? Yeah, over here. So, what was your route that the ship took? The ship take from France we pass through the Mediterranean, it goes to port, port side. So, 
through the sewer, sewer canal, and Red Sea, and then the next hit is Colombo. Never pass it. Then Colombo, and from Colombo then to West Australia. To West Australia, Fremantle. And then at night, you know, just uh, for water, I think, for four hours there, and then to Melbourne. But uh, see, when they go to Colombo, they discharge cargo, see? They discharge cargo and load something else, see? That's why they took us six weeks to come here. Did uh, any Maltese people leave the ship at Fremantle? I couldn't tell you, I don't think so. I don't think so. We went down that time, and here they had the uh, copper strike, I think, the policeman's right. Because we went there, we went there to have a drink in the hotel in, in West Australia, in Perth. And the publican told, he says, boy, he says, where are you going? We said, to Melbourne. He says, why was you all longer to remember, stop here. He says, because there's a big strike there, the policeman was strike. It was a big strike here. But I think the strike was on 20. Is it 120? After that, I was only a kid. I remember the police strike, but I couldn't tell you the year. Yeah, they broke everything here in the city, I reckon. So no one would have got off at Adelaide either? No, I couldn't. I could, uh, no, because Adelaide, we never got right in the port of Adelaide, outside. And then to Melbourne, did most of the Maltese get off of Yes, some, yes, yeah, some, a good few of them got here. But you know, when you get here, then you don't, you don't take notice of the others, you know, you look after yourself, yeah. see what I mean, is there. That's how we've done it. And yeah. um, what, uh, uh, what about the trip itself? Oh, the trip was all right. We struck it a couple of days off where there. The engine stopped <laughs> between Colombo and Fremantle. Yeah, and I seen, i tell you what, I got a submarine. It was a big, what do you call it, a, uh, we call it the bluefish. The dolphin? No, it's a dolphin. It's, it's as long as a submarine. Not a whale. Whale, whale. Whale. Like a submarine. I tell you what, you can stand on it. It's like a... Yeah, as big as the boat, and I thought it was a damn bank, you know, what I mean, it was this bloody thing. And we stopped there for a couple of days till they fixed the engines, and we got off there, go. went back to uh, some good weather after that, and uh, we got to Fremantle, and then... What was the accommodation like? Oh, accommodation, all right. Like or...? Oh, yeah, they got... The, I'll tell you what they had, the... We was like this, this is the deck up here, right? Mm -hmm. That's the deck. We was underneath it. We had a, I was say, for the length of this house, a bit more. White like that. Passage or bunks. You got two bunks, one on top of the other, you know, like that all over. Like that. That's how we were. The food was, hey? the food was good. Oh, the food was good. Was there a, a priest on board? Hey? Did you have a priest on board? I couldn't tell you. I suppose I will, but I couldn't tell you. Because I was, I tell you the truth, I was busy there. I used to <laughs> can try to learn French with them, see? Yeah, understand, uh, I go to for the bread, tell them how much they want, and he wants to tell you, tell him to learn, you, you know, teach you. See? And I used to get that in charge of that, in charge of the wine, in charge of the tables. Like I tell you to do that, and you, you know, you have to do it because the big fella is there watching too, see? Well, why did they choose you to do that? Well, I don't know. They might like me to work. <laughs> but it was all right, all good fun. They used to like the table put the uh, pepper and salt and the bread and the glass for the wine. Some of them twist the spoons. 
and uh, Jeff, I had money with me, like if I want anything, you know what I mean. If I never had no money, I got, you know, f like friends here who can get it, you know, from But I had money because I had a, I had a bit too much, I had to send some home again for what I got left, because I started working. See, and when I was working, when I got on the country road board, there's plenty of tucker there, you got the coke, you got everything. So, do pay. Tell me uh, what happened on the first day, like when you arrived at uh, Port Melbourne. No, I'm not Port Melbourne, the dock, okay. Victoria Dock. Victoria Dock, sir. Mm. Uh, was there, uh, did you end up meeting some Maltese people? There was, there was, they, you know, the old, the old people, they know the Maltese coming on that boat, see? And they come there to have a look. Like you go in Port Melbourne, see the passengers coming there, see? Yeah. Was. And uh, then we know that place about King Street. You already knew about that? Yeah, we know. We in know. Malta? In Malta, yeah. Well, and how did you know? We, know? we know the place and you know the men in there, see? And then. Uh, there was a couple of blogs there, with, uh, uh, they come to see the boat, so, you know, see the passengers from the boat and all. And then we got a taxi, we went up there. That's what it was, and then they took us to these Irish people, and they had about, oh, they got two, like, two big houses together, like, you know, in Lathrop Street. And we had, uh, I had a... Uh, room with another bloke, like two beds in one room, you know, in the room. It was all right. Only lasted there a month because I had to go. I got a job in the country roads board then. And did any of the other uh, Maltese passengers end up in that few Irish place? Oh, yes, yeah, there was. There was some of them went back to Malta and some of them, you know, stopped here. So in that month, were you looking for a job the whole time? No, no, nothing. I never looked for a job at all. I just, uh, my, I tell you what, my cousin was working up there, at the gun road for, see, he come here before me. And uh, he's dead now. And uh, he took me and took another block with him up there. And the, the manager, the inspector gave us job straight away. So he, you had a cousin? Yeah, he came here two years after, two years before me. Did you remember his name? Oh, Christ, I remember, but poor bugger is dead. Was he from the same father to go to? His mother, yeah, his mother, my father's sister. My father and his mother, brother's sister. And he had a job? He was working there, yeah, that's, is, uh, he was working there before, you know, before I come. And he came down for holidays, see? And uh, he took us with him up there. And we got the job fixed up with the country road board. Tony, Tony Shikluna, you know. Mm -hmm.
never thought of anything like that, like uh, if I'm going to stop in here or not or that. So after the first month, uh, you, you were able to get this job through your cousin. Yeah. Uh, could you tell me about the job? The job used to be a uh, pick and shovel in the road, like uh, you cut the, you know, you, where we done the roads, it's all hills there, like mountains. Wait, wait, what was it again? You mentioned like mountains. It is a Thunder Road board. And it was, uh, the first we started was in, uh, not Mansabine, that's what, that, Fermi that's what, what is it? Fermielic? No, that's after. Is it south of Melbourne? No, you have to go to Geelong and then bridge. get the train, the other bridge off. Oh, it'll come in every day. Jesus. Anyway, keep talking. Just come back mm. to you. It does just say so. That time there, there never used to be just a road made, but not wide enough, you know, very narrow. Mm. They used to make it, dig it uh, the And mountain. we used to dig the mountain over here, because you have a like, you'll go up cut here and you go in and pour the the dirt on the other to make the road wider right. see and then to make the foot part right. and then when uh, when we we'll cut an, enough here they'll get the rollers and uh, with the horses it'll be about uh, six or eight horses with the rollers behind them you know instead of the engines like they got now yeah. with the horses and uh, they roll that, and then they you open a, a, a crusher to break the stone. They put a line on the side there on the road with the yard trucks, you know, little trucks. And they, they got the, about half a mile away, they got the uh, crusher, crushing the stone and fill it in the trucks. And they bring it over to us, and we spread it on the floor, see, you put the, you got the board here and you got the board here. So you put it level, see? And you got the middle, in the middle to give a, a slope down for the water, see? And throw it the, then when you put the stone on it, you roll it, you'll keep, you get, get the horses on it all the time. So that time was no engines, no engine now, yeah. like a steam roller, see? Yeah, yeah. And that's how we used to do it. And then with the Baramanga, Baramanga, the first place I was, Baramanga. And then I went, uh, we finished the stretch we wanted to finish. And then we went, shipped to the, it'll be about five miles up, uh, Mount Sabine. That's uh, the biggest mountain. And since I was there, in, uh, in 18 months, we never had a full pay with the rain. Really? So they didn't pay you when it rained? No, never, that time never used to pay. Nobody, no pay on the line, and. Uh, How but, much a day was the? Uh, but I was lucky. I was lucky because, when, uh, of course, we had a like a canteen, a mess we call it, with the cook, you know, big fire there, bread tables and chairs, and good food there, and uh, the supervisor used to see me. He say. Uh, where are you? What are you doing? I said, nothing. Why? Go and get a couple of logs for the cook. A couple of logs of wood to put them on the fire, you know, like that, and then they chop them. I said, it's rain. He says, when the rain comes, he says, get under the shelter. <laughs> and I used to get paid all the time. <laughs> he used to pay me. See? <laughs> there was, no, you used to be 29, wait a minute. 13 and something a day, I think. Yeah, 13 and 6 a day. 13 and 6 or something. Tell me, was there a... Uh, did any of the other Maltese blokes get work there with you? Yes, there was another one. There was my cousin working there too. But, but from Melbourne? Hey? You know, like you got the job in Melbourne? No, I got the, my my son, my, my cousin took me there. Oh, see? Okay, see? took me there and the supervisor fixed everything himself, so he wanted men, so... So this would be the beginning of 
25, 1925. About that. About that. Were there other Maltese working there apart from your cousin? No, it was only them two. Me and him. Me and him. Were the others mainly uh, from overseas? Do you remember? The others are Australians, most of the Australians. And the, uh, the English he wanted to get then, that time, it was uh, drivers, young drivers, to drive a horse and drag, see? With the uh, underway, it's in tempo per day or something like that. But they used to be men, Englishmen used to be. You know, bigger older than me, used to be older than me. What about the union in those days? Was there a union? Yeah, it was union. I went to pay the union myself. I was 21, and uh, he said, no. He says, you have to be 21, and you'll pay the union then. But that's what it was. If you're not 21 year old, you're not a man. Like, you know, I went to pay the union. But if you didn't have a union ticket, were you able to keep working there? Oh, you'll keep working already. They keep you there. I tell you, when, when they put the uh, people off there, in the end of uh, about June, they see we used to be there about uh, 80 men with the things and they cut about half of them off and uh, then in July you know when the budget comes again well they get more money and they pick up the men again so that's how they do it they cut the road but I was like I kept, uh, kept there all the time and there from there put them uh, put them in the front if you like uh, from there, we finished that, and we went to, Mon to uh, that was Mount Sabine when I told you. Wild Dog, the place, the name. Wild, Wild Dog. Yes, yes. See, going to Apollo Bay. Well, we done that one, and that was our limit to finish. Well, we finished that, and uh, with the same thing. Well, I finish up, and the, uh, no, not that, I, we finished all that together, and we finished the job there. And he said, uh, now we'll go to uh, Perignalek. That's right, but it's Ballarat right? Perignalek. And I said, uh, I don't think I'll go there. He says, you have to come there. <laughs> you know, like, anyhow, yeah, we went to Perignalek. And you, you didn't want to go? No, I didn't want to go. Why was that? Just uh, because I changed the job, like from there to there. He says, what's wrong with you? You sort of work with the same contractor. Yes, the same, pay, the same a supervisor and everything, all together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you work with the same Anyhow, he said, look, he says, you put your clothes there in that uh, van, you got the everything, what you, what you don't uh, take, what you leave it there, and you go to the city, you know, a couple of days, and then you come to Perignalek. Say Ballar on Ballarat, why? But uh, I think it's Ballarat and then Perinia, like. Check that. Eh? Check that. Mm. And uh, I went there and sucked my mate, uh, the Australian blogs, or two Australian blogs, and uh, the trucks was in there with the stuff in it, and we had to live in the hotel there. Uh, well, these blokes was drunk, and this, this fella never seen a, they, the public and they never seen a more this bloke before. See? And I drinking with that bloke, he, he's working with me and the other fella, and wine and bloody beer. beer. And the public and shout too. And I got drunk. And when he got drunk, he was never, the, the, the other told me after, see? He says he, the public had never seen a more. Mortis block with drunk. And uh, they, they, his wife come, uh, come out, you know, they took me on the lawn there in the front and they took me to bed, like, and uh, his, his wife looked after me, took me to bed, and in the morning when I woke up, you know, about five o'clock in the morning, I woke up. It's still a bit. Uh, and I see two old blokes come with this. Shit. That time the old blokes here, the Australian, used to work in says, but yeah, man, shared, shared to here. Why, bloody? I said, what the blood? I said, what's that? I thought it's ghosts or something. Yeah, I think. Um, 
Anyhow, uh, if one of them come with the drink to come with me, good pal, you want the drink? I said, fuck it, the drink. Anyhow, anyhow, then it was all right, and then I felt sick. And I went, I went in the railway, Imperial railway station, and find out the mic where we got the, our clothes. And I pick up my clothes from the top of the tent and pick up my, my luggage and come to Melbourne. <laughs> Without anybody know, I come to Melbourne. Anyhow... And where were you again? What, where was the hotel? Uh, Peri yeah. Peri Peri Yalek. Is there, then I was here for a, a fortnight. Where did you stay in that fortnight? In here, yeah. the Irish people. Ah, right. Readings, readings, I don't know. Anyhow, they kept sending telephone uh, letters to me to go up. The supervisor, see? She met the supervisor too. The white head, this is a white head. You remember him, Dave? Uh, he, sa he said, uh, I want you up here. And yeah, I went. And he came to meet me at the station, because it's a bit, a bit, a bit far away from the station to walk like. And yeah, we got all right. And he gave me a job, not a car chauffeur. First I was in there with the plow. A rescue. See, it was four men. You you have the scoop, I have the plow. Plow to cut the dirt off. Why did the roads, you know? Right. Cut the roads off, uh, cut it, and the other one scoop it and throw it on the side, see? And uh, we done that, doing that, and then uh, after I have to go on the quarry, and then the bottom of the hill, they got the quarry, see? They got quarry. The you call it where you break, break the stone and then crack in the small ones. See, and then they go to the crusher, see, the trucks will fill them up in the trucks. And they'll go up the hill and the crusher and they come up the small ones, like they put in the rest. Like screen. Like screen. The big, bigger rejects, I call them. Then uh, finish up there. And he put me in the crusher. He says, no, they had to go. They sent them first, first what they done, they left uh, only some men there, me and another four, about 10 altogether, the blacksmith, and uh, like scoop and widen the stuff. And then they brought the other men from the city again, see? Then, he says, now you, he says, you go on the crusher. I said, uh, why? why? Well, so, he says, I got nobody to go on the crusher. I said, all right, I go on the crusher. And I got there, uh, I used to get there five, five, five quid a week. That's what it used to be. Five quid a week, I got more than the others. And uh, I went on the crusher. The block, uh, it dropped the stone here, the big ones like that, see? And uh, I used to feed the crusher. And they couldn't keep up with me. They said, the engineer went crook, the place, everyone went crook. He says, the trucks, the, the way, you want to call the drays, come with the horses, but they can't, uh, they can't keep this crusher out of stone, see? And he said to me, this engineer come, he says, you mean to, Tell me that you never know nothing about the crusher. I said, I don't know nothing about the crusher. I said, I'm telling you now. He says, I swear blind. He says, you've been working somewhere else in the bloody crusher. I said, to keep all them trucks wait, uh, all full, they, they all full, <laughs> and the crusher stop. See? Anyhow, I said, look, I said, one thing I know about it, I know you want to pay, when you get the stone, I said I put the point in first. Mm, he said. I said, that was, was, but I never done a quarry at all. I said, I work in the quarry, I said, pick, uh, uh, breaking stone, that's all. 
قدام عيون عبرجي أنا ياو كابتلاي ذات and then when I used to come when I used to come to the city they used to keep my clothes up there to go back and the supervisor had the daughter there and they used to the when they when I used to go for the letters see from here and not only for 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 the camp like. There was about 70 men there, and uh, my letters were not, not there. The girl in the post office and the, the daughter of the supervisor, they used to keep my letters. See? Yeah, yeah. anyhow, uh, I used to go about a mile down to, to get them. I used to go for, on a pony, you know, like a bareback. What, you used to ride there? Right? Yeah. Uh, the, the, um, the, the contractor who got the horses, he had a pony there. He drive all the money? Yeah, you know, just ride them, ride them. On bareback. Anyhow, uh, and he, was letter, he got all the letters, not, not hairs, none. They keep themselves. And then in the morning, she'll come up to her father up there, and you hear him sing out, Joe! The supervisor was an alpha. Joe! Come here, we have to go to the where this office, you know, and his his daughter there, and she say he say, you got a letter here, yeah. see? They keep it. They she used to keep it to give it to me herself. <laughs> Anyhow, after, the, after that I couldn't come. I, I if I come to the city. They have to, have to keep the clothes there, in her place, in their place. He said, you, you keep their clothes here, I'll look after them, till you come. To go, to go back, see? And then finish that job altogether, after a long while. Just how long were you there? Oh, it was a good few months, right? You all remember that. You had my clothes in here, didn't you? Oh, it was about 12 months, I reckon, or more. Anyhow, then the uh, order come for me to go Wood End or Ballarat Road. They were making Ballarat Road too, you know, it was all, you know, they were making it nice, nice road. That's where you were wasn't it? Yeah. No, Powder Monkey was in pretty yellow. Yeah. And, uh, when I said, no, I said, would then I won't go. I said, I'll go in the quarry. I'll come here in, in Albion quarry. You get a job there cracking stuff, see? And the supervisor said, you bloody mad. He said, what do you have to go there for? He said, you get killed with the bloody, you know, blasting stones all the time. Oh, I said, I'm look I said, I look after myself. Anyhow, I went. Ballarat Road, and I had a job with the broom. See, and it's a long way from from anything. You can't get a drink, you can't get nothing. There's nothing in the road. It's all there. And I am running, the, the same road I'm running, and I'm behind it. If there's anything, you know, just a bit of broom. And this uh, bloke, I got sick of it. Anyhow, I got close to where a, a shop there, and they got a bottle of soft drink. You know, it's dry and everything. Anyhow, the former come along joking, and I had a broom, and he said, hey, Joe, he said, put some weight on it, you know, to work. Yeah. I said, all right, and break it, break it. Uh. Anyhow, I said, I'm finished. He said, what's wrong with you? I said, no, I said, I don't like this job. I said, it's too silly for me, it's too quiet. You can't do nothing. You just, unless you sweat on the road there, and you can't get anything to eat or anything there. Anyhow, I gave it to the supervisor. Come, he says, I won't pay you. I said, why? why? I said, I said, I don't like this job. Anyhow, he said, he said me the same. He said, 
He said, what do you want to go in the quarry? He said, what are you going to get a job? I said, in the quarry. He said, you get killed there. Eh? Say, you want me to give me up there? He used to come on, on the motorbike, say to the... Anyhow, I said, there. Now I said, I'll finish. And I know where to go for the money. I go to the, the office. See, he never paid me, but I knew where I go. I went there and got the money, all right. Anyhow, and then went to the quarry. Worked there for a few months. Yeah, where was the quarry? In uh, Albion. In Albion. Albion quarry. In Albion. And then when we finished from there, I got on the war fight again. Yeah, what year did you go to the war? When did you start there? Do uh, but before 28. Before 28. Because 28 was a strike. 27. 27 I went on the, on the war. How did you get that job? On the war? Yeah. To fill up the application. And, uh, the application. He had to apply for it in Tasmania. He put his application that went to Tasmania and he uh, was really on Tasmania. I could have went to Tasmania straight away, you and know. Then he turned around and transferred. Transferred it here to Melbourne. But you didn't actually go to Tasmania? No. 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 And you I didn't have like what, friends on the wharves already here who Oh yeah, but I never worry about them when I see in the office. Have to see in the office, in the head office, see. Not a big, uh, were there a lot of Maltese on Oh, a few, few, few. Few there was. In those days there was in the There was only a few. Mm. Yeah, after, after the strike, uh, there was a lot of Maltese camp, but they scab in after, see. After uh, the 28th strike, there was uh, the scabs. There was everything, Italians, Greeks, everything, Irish blokes, uh, bloody English everywhere. Maltese. <laughs> That's when you wanted to see things in Australia, Barry. They used to get the scabs, herd them up, put them on a boat, and they used to put them, take them on a motor ferry into the ships wherever they had to go. And we, I think you might have saw it on one of the television. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was true. That was true. That uh, thing what they fought with the police and the police in the ditch. I was there. Yeah, I was there in Port Melbourne. I was because we had a meeting, but I didn't. We didn't know that was going to happen, because the coppers was right. But they brought coppers from in countries. See, that's what causing the trouble there. We never. We've had it pretty stiff out there at times, you know. It hasn't always been handy out there. See, I got there, join and. From here, I transferred to Port Melbourne. That they call the stimulator. That's the, yeah. 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 the deep sea. The side this one, the water side worker, is just the wharf. That's on the boat and all. See, the so deep sea. When you started on the wharf, what, what were you? I've been down. Just the stimulator. See, you got on the boat. And were you working? Uh, down the house. With other Maltese people, or...? Oh, with English, Australian, with anything you had to win. Then, uh, when I got everything finished, the strike started. Explain, explain to Barry how they used to turn around and you used to have to go down twice a day. Ten oh, yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, and then, when we start to come in, you know, to work, after a long time, you know, we was on strike for a long time. And then they opened for us too. But we used to be in one place and the others on this side, the scabs, we call them scabs. Like they do in England, they do it everywhere. And they are, uh, then uh, we had to get a ticket, like a license. You can work with them, but don't fight or anything. But they get you that and you finish from the inside. Anyhow, that thing's gone, and then they gave them, they gave the scabs the boats, and we'll have the other boats. You know what I mean? Uh, like, you have two boats, and I'll, we'll have two do on the other side, see? And we kept going like that then, till they come, and then amalgamate with us after, and finish. But after that was all right, everything was all right. So what years was the strike? Eh? The strike was, what, 28? 28, yeah. 28, it took till about 30, I think. And uh, 
See, you okay. couldn't get that job at all. So you got there. I, I didn't know even my number was on. Till a block told me, Mortis fella, he says, Joe, he says, you've been to the union room? I said, no. He says, your number's on top. You know, just uh, to go tell him you're right for work. He says, because I know your number is on the hand, mine is underneath you. <laughs> See? And then started, and I still got up there. I still got the license there at the damn thing. Yeah, you see it. You said they brought some Maltese over too. Oh, correct. Oh, yes, yes. Maltese, not from Maltese. Not from Maltese, from here. From here, there was Maltese never worked in their life. I know one of them was number one first person in there. And he, I believe he died in Sydney now. He's dead. We call him the third. <laughs> there used to be a lot of more to his mother. Good few more to every, every nation. Do you know what on your front motor is checked? It's dead. And what's best? It's lost. It's done lost. Anyhow, he finished that work for years on the waterfront. He turned around and he died. He uh, put on additional uh, men on the waterfront. And uh, John turned around and looked fried. And I turned around when you went there, they said to him now, this yeah. boy was about five when his father was scared. When he went to turn around and work on the wharf, he was 28. And I turned around and uh, they, they said, said that for father. And for him, and his father was a bloody scared. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. After all that time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, you did not forget. And you know, now you're still going, isn't you? The, uh, when her, when her uncle came down here, he never come to see me, he come to see her mother to see if I was a scab or anything. Because he's thinking that a labor man was her father, uh, her uncle. And how were the Maltese though on the wall? Were they not staunch unionists? Oh, some of them were staunch unionists. Did you generalize and say they were with the union or? Oh, no, yes. there wasn't a union, there was. Some of them, Joe, yeah, there was. was a union. Yes, yeah, they were union. Yeah. 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 They were yeah. union. Yeah. They were yeah. union. Yeah. They were union. Yeah. 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 The scabs the used to go down there and work yeah. with them too. But with the government, you had to work with the children. You had to have life. If I was a scab and Joe, you was a union man. He couldn't turn around and say, you're bloody scared. Yeah, you like that. And the inspector come along now and then and see if you got the ticket. Got the ticket. So it's uh, the government. And then when he stopped, that's, he got everything right. You know what I mean? We got in and we got better, better a bit and kept going. Yeah, we used to go, uh, I, I used to go there, I took, be there at 8 o'clock in the morning. Till 10 o'clock, till the car was any work. Then, if you know, we have to go 1 o'clock till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And you never get paid or anything. See? But when they got to know me, I got a job all the time. What I wanted, I got it. He was a worker, a conscientious See, that uh, you got the. There was about four formers. I can get a job with them any time I want it. No trouble. Because they can leave the job themselves to go for a drink or something, and they know they will be there to do the work. You know, I mean, do what I, I'm told to do. What about working conditions in those days? That days was everything hand, have the muscles. Everything, all them big gears, as you say, we used to discharge them on a, on, a, on a little truck there with six wheeler like that, that big like that. Six wheeler and another truck behind with, with a two wheeler. And with about uh, six men with it. And do you have to block it? You go put it on the ground, first one. The second block it on top of it. Keep going like that till the high for you. All, all I remember, Barry, him turning around and uh, saying, Joe, you're not 
coming from the, my mother had business in the market, and I remember him coming in from Gunnison and got uh, work tonight. I'd say, all right. He turned around and uh, he'd go, he'd work all night, all the next day, oh, yes. and that's on the next night. On the next break. night, too. He couldn't break. Then I saw him work on the New Zealand, on the flower. Yeah, place. we used to do that. And he'd have his place. overalls on, and he'd cut on the side of the front of the house, and he could spend his overalls up and the top of the station and flower. Yeah, so you had no smoke, you had nothing till we got it and we got it after. He had nothing, no water there, to, no hot water. No lavatories. No, no, even no, no lavatories. Used to be a long way away to go, let them out from the west. If you can't sort of stay on that tape, what he's gone through, you've got to sort oh. of be here and over the time. No, you yeah, tell yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I appreciate that. Yeah. I'd like to do one with you for that reason, so you can put it in. Yeah. She can talk, but really. yeah. No, but what I mean, just as well. No, uh, thank you, my work hard down there. He's worked hard. He has. Work and lucky. What, what, what were you saying before about uh, that? part of the TV program here. Uh, when the scabs were the cats going yeah. around in the water, yeah. oh, yeah. houses got bombed here. The house has been bombed. Before we were married, before we were married, Barry, the strike was on and the scabs were in. I lived over here in that area. Oh, yes. Being young and stupid, I used to think it was beautiful. Last tram going, and even have to walk to the snow. Yeah. And he told me one night, he said, there was another fella, this fella I told the grind, or feed the grind, was very much like Jay. He's dead. And he was a scared. He came to me one day, he says, I got followed last night, and I said, Did you? And he said, Yes. He said, Two uh, walkers. There was five of them. Five walking behind me. He says, Coming down Bolt Street. And is that blocked? Is that, that blocked? Is it blocked, is it? Yeah. Is, is it blocked? Yeah. Right? No, it's gone. It's still and, going. And he said, uh, they were talking, and he said, he's a scab, and one of the fellows knew Joe, and he said, no, he's a Today is the 18th of September 1984. This is a continuation of the interview with Joe Malak. Last time we finished off uh, talking about the the, the strike there mm. in Port Melbourne. Uh, do you have anything else to say about that strike? Uh, I was particularly interested to know if, with, with how the Maltese waterside workers responded to the strike. Like, were they more with the union or the Maltese? The Maltese was. Uh, we only was few mortars down there, all right, like me, like no uh, volunteers or anything. See? Then they called for the free labor. And then, of course, mortars, Italians, English, and you know, everybody went down there. But they called them scabs, see? Then uh, we, we had nothing to do at all. We, we was locked out. So he, then me, for start, I went uh, with the wife's uncle in, uh, in New South Wales, in Yanko, making bricks for a few, because I couldn't get a job, another, you know, I couldn't get another job. I was going to say, the strike ended with people being locked out Yeah, the union blocks was a little locked out. In your class. So where, where were you uh, living at the time of the lockout? What we was living? Oh, we still had that we, room. You know, we used to live with Reds. 
Hey, well, where, where was that? In Oxford. The, 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 the room in Oxford. Street. No, no, I, no, no, not in Latrobe Street. Listen, when I got there, when I got there, I was living with uh, in Jeffco Street with Charlie Buffanine. Yeah, Charlie Farber. Yeah, I used to live. I used to live. I was single then. I was still living. I had a room. I had a room with Charlie with uh, Maltese fella. And where was that? In uh, Jeffco Street, West Melbourne. Near the near the. Uh, Docks near the docks. So, yeah. so when you were locked out, what happened then? I mean, you couldn't pay rent. I suppose. Oh, well, had, we had, you've never got no help from no them, help from you? nowhere. We only had about oh, what he gave us. I think he gave us. I still had this marked on the ticket I got about. Uh, Used to give you eight, 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 eight shillings and something, and sixpence. I think he gave us to get better groceries. Not the government. But the, no, not the government. The union, the union. And then uh, I got. Uh, I was where I was living. Then I shifted to where uh, in Hawke Street, in the, in, in the place. I had it myself, and I had another couple of Maltese who were living there with me too. You know, the house, eight pound a week. I had few, but like, you know what I mean? This was 28? Or yeah, just after 28 a bit. Then, uh, uh, her uncle, the wife's uncle, come down, and went to the, uh, the old lady to find out if I was a scab down there or not. Ah, yes. See, because he was it's the thing that I left him yes. See? Anyhow, he found out everything because he didn't know me himself. And uh, came to me, he says, you can come up there and get a job up there. You know, making bricks. First, I wasn't making bricks. I was uh, mixing up the clay with the sand. See, that's how they got the, uh, we used to do, see? Be before we move on to that, uh, yeah. the two Maltese blokes who came into Hawke Street yeah. with you, can you tell me about them? I can't, I can't tell you, Mike, because they, they was out of work like I was, see? Those days there wasn't much work. There wasn't, uh, uh, Do you know, like, when did they come from Malta? Or? Oh, yeah, they come from Malta, but I don't know the like village. Frank was one of your I friends. don't know their village, you know, the name of the village. They come from Malta, the two of them. One, uh, one, one was from uh, my village, from Gozo, and the other one from Malta. It was there. And they had come to Australia after you or before you? Or they, I think I found them there, here. The two they of them. There. Oh, come so. mm. Would you remember their names? One is uh, two. Uh, one Frank. Frank the Bono. Yeah, Frank the Bono. He's still alive. Uh, yeah, and the other, the other was Frank too. Is dead. Oh, yeah. The other one is Frank. One from Gauta, from from Malta it was. Frank. Who? Frank uh, the Gauta is still living. The Bono. Yeah, and the other one from Malta. Do you remember his last name? No, I couldn't tell you. See, we don't know by the names mostly. I'm not Frank the Bono because, you know, they call him like that. But the others, like uh, me, say Joe Tanassi. Tanassi is the name of my father, say, the nickname of my father. See, they do, they go like that the more days, see. Anyhow, uh, then from that house, uh, I used, I went up there to uh, make work, you know, in Yanko to make the bricks, you know, like we're going to do, make the, in the brickyard, see? That's up uh, in, uh, in... In New South Wales, Yanko. And uh, then what's happened, the government, now, her uncle says to me, or says to her, really, to, to uh, the wife, I wasn't married then, even then, but she come up to her auntie, see? And he says uh, to her, he says, Look, he says, the, the things is coming a bit tight, 
and I can't keep a single man here and and sick a uh, married man, see? He says, well, then she's got married, see? And he, uh, uh, then oh, she said, all right, well, I'll, uh, well I'll, uh, they ask me, and everybody else said, all oh, right. And we got married up there. We got married up there, and of course, after a while, <laughs> Lang, in New South Wales, closed the banks, yes. see? Well, he went black broke. You know, we had to close everything and sack everybody. And then we come down, I come down again here, in Melbourne. And uh, then I start to wear, uh, there was no work, but they gave me a job uh, from the Peru to do uh, a couple of months. So, uh, sorry for interrupting, but uh, how long were you actually up? Up there, we about a couple of years or a bit more, is it? Couple of years. Yeah. So until about 31. It'd be about 31 or something. We were married in 1930. That's right, and we was, uh, yeah, you know, we were married. You, yes, you was up there, yeah, that's right. Mm. Could you tell me about the uh, nature of the work that you did? Oh, up yeah. There? Well, yeah. What, what did it involve each day? Or each day we used to have, um, he used to make the bricks before, like, before I went up there. And he had a, it's a, you know the clay house or the quarry, is it? Yeah, well, this quarry, but it's made only for sand and their clay. See? They got, he got the whole life under the when I went up there. And uh, you cut through, you got water here, like a little dam, so what they call them. And there is the clay. Well, the clay would be high about, a little bit higher than that, say about 16 feet or 18 feet down. And you go there with the pick and cut it down, make a hollow like that underneath, mm -hmm. see? And after, after a while, when you cut right, you go from the top and this will come down altogether. Right. And then you get the water, the, the, you open the thing, the water, the water goes on it and there, uh, and mix it up, see, in sort of uh, little blocks like that, like about three or four foot by four, and uh, you mix it up, and they got uh, a little big bucket, I call it, to come down on the line, and I'll fill it up with the uh, clay and sand mixed together. And they had the thing up there, and they got their horse, to pull it up, it goes around like that, and pull the uh, pull the bucket up and put it in the bean, wow. see, and on the bean, and that is the uh, stage like. Here they got a place like that, it's a bit bigger than here, than here. The clay will come together and they mix here. One block here where I think the clay will come out in a hole like that, coming out all the time from the pit. And the other one is on this side, see? And uh, he made the bricks, he got the form. He, you know, this fellow got a form and this fellow got a form. Well, he got the things like a, what do you call it now? Trowel, big trowel. You know what they use, the things. And they grabbed the, 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 the clay from there and the sand together and put it in the form. We only have to do it in the form. They call it homemade, homemade bricks. So handmade bricks. Homemade, yeah. And uh, then he, when he made the, these bricks, he got a trolley like that with the uh, stage on it and he put about 24 bricks in it, what he made. And when he got the 24, this, this door is shut here. No black come here. So he did for like a worker, if he likes to make. And you make the 24, and you take them in the shed, the open shed, like by only got the roof. And uh, they put them, I, I can't touch that. They put them on the edge, the, this, 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 the bricks. 
They'll go on the other one. This one goes like that. And next door, leave it open a bit, little bit like that. And then when you come with the next one, you put it on the top. You like it, it'll come on between them again. Oh, yeah. See, like that. And here goes a line for about 300 bricks or more. Yeah. Long way, long sheds. Yeah, I'll put them there. Uh, they'll, they'll put them in there, and the other fellow put them on this side. See, and leave the room where you we can work. Uh, and then, when it's that filled, like, you know, it goes back to make bricks again, and when you fill it up, what you have to do? Well, it cover it up a bit. See? We'll cover the bricks up with, with the cushion. Cushion, cushion, bags, but cushion. We'll cover it up for the wind to never dry quick. Otherwise, it'll crack. Then, uh, when it dry, it thinks it's dry, it'll, it'll take it away from here and put it in the kiln. The kills for the fire. Kills. We have the kills as, as not as big as this house, but a bit smaller. It'll be, it'll be nearly from here right to the front. Square. And underneath they got the, the hole about like that. Look, about three foot tall side, round like that. That side they go to this side. Both sides, and you got about six altogether, three on that side and three on the other one. And then put all the bricks in there inside, fill it up with the bricks, and uh, and block the holes. Not the not the dumb holes. Then of course you have to feed them first. You have to put the logs in. Put the logs. That that time they used to put the logs. And. Uh, her father used to go and get the logs. He got he got four horses there. One one for the that thing for the you know pick up the on the mill like to get the stuff, and the others for any uh, go get the wood and everything like that. He got a big uh, car there with the get the logs, and you'll burn them for about three days, three days and three nights. You go and uh, so when you see. Uh, you have to watch it. When you see it's short, you have to put the logs in again and block it. See? And then you have to watch for the cracks of the bricks, or you know, on the walls, you know, the, on the kill. And if you do that, if you see any cracks, you have to, you got a leather and, you know, put a buck with much. You have to never get any air out, see? Any heat out at all. And leave it there blocked for three days and then Take it away, and we got the orders. Up there in Yanko and in Yanko and Leighton, Yanko was practically empty there, no people there, just only the post office and a few few little houses there. And then there was a Leighton. Well, he used to get the contract from Leighton to the up there, the, the main flight there, Leighton. And he had it for the picture theaters and everything. That's how we were making, uh, making bricks. Yeah, that sounds very dangerous work. Well, it's dangerous, one thing, when that person falls down. You know, when you, you know, when you're in the quarry. Yeah, yeah. See? Because that's how you go underneath. You have to cut to bring it down, see? And then put dig a hole on top. I used to put the hole on top. And then uh, get the bar, you know, and, uh, and she loose her, come off. How many people would have been employed? Were there hundreds of people? No, no, no. There was about there. Uh, her father. Her uncle never used to work much. You know, just look after the books and all. And me. It was about 12 altogether. Oh, okay. And were they sort of itinerant? Uh, Labourers, like people who would come from Sydney or Melbourne? No, you, I'd find them all up there. Even her father was up there, too, you know what I mean? Her father was a little bit of trouble. They're all there. Uh, all those It's all there. Uh, love for them, three hours or four weeks, I think. So, were there for a couple of years? Yeah, till the... Till the uh, the bank closed in the 70s. 
sound right because uh, the land, the land was the land, the uh, prison, yeah. It closed the bank. The state bank of the South Valley. Well, the, everything shut down. So, yeah. Then, stop it! Hey! <laughs> yes, stop it! Stop it, let it go. Then, we, the cab, the cab brought a few things to head, and uh, something sitting in, uh, in Melbourne. Then from there we went to Merbelong, go away. What do you find there in Melbourne? Where did you go? Where did you stay? Oh, it's a couple of nights. That's where we For a couple of nights, I think, or something, is it? A couple of weeks. A house with Yeah, and then we went there. Yeah, I tried to speak around that. And then we went to Merbelong. We tried to go to Merbelong. She had a house, the mother had a house down there. And she got uh, a couple of people in it, but she wanted to put them out for something out of time right now. And yeah, we had a couple of rooms there, and the others had a couple of rooms there too, you know, there was nice people. And then... And then we went to Then we stopped, and yeah, stopped there for a while. Were you working at the start? No. No, we yeah, I didn't. Yes, I did. Oh, okay. yeah. I went on the sand. No. Oh, that's what I was working for O'Brien. I was working for O'Brien. Uh, he had the sand pit up in there. Uh, what they call Bulla Road there. What do you call the place here up here? For what? Yeah, Bulla Road. I uh, had to go up Bulla Road. I had to get right up Bulla Road. Oh, Sunbury? Yes. No, this side is Sunbury. This side is Sunbury. He got a name, but I got some things, you know. And we used to, uh, I used to go up there, Essendon, and meet the other blokes from Merbelog is not far, so to go up there, you know, they took the park. And I used to go uh, with the blokes that would be a car or a car because they will have to go about four miles up. Anyhow, we used to have a cut the same to make a they sell the between there, you know, with the machine and all. And they sell the sand. They got lots of, you know, with the, I, I think the sand was two of a yard or something. They were sell it or something like that. And then uh, we started. So I got it uh, working up there, and then I start the pinch hour sand. Yes, the same way at night. It's better to go to sell it, take it away. See? And we couldn't sell it. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, he finished his stuff there. We stopped all together every day. And then we shifted to, uh, to North Melbourne, yeah. We shifted to North Melbourne, and... Yeah, you guys worked at uh, Speedsman? Yeah, right on, right on, yeah. Yeah, I had about... Uh, that was on the Melbourne, is it? Hey? Melbourne was the two pictures used to be in the barrel seat. Melbourne? Melbourne? Yeah, we were there now. Melbourne, the other one. Star. No, not Star at all. Melbourne, something else the other one. Anyhow, we call it the Melbourne. I used to work, excuse me, I used to work uh, like night work, you have to work there. They used to work night with them, uh, take the building walk, break and uh, take, take the picture of the eye at all. Demolish it. Demolish it. And uh, to build them a big building there, like we got full air. Uh, oh, is that cars now, is it? Yeah. Yes, cars in the in Berry Street. Anyhow, then a few days till we fin finish that for your nights, and then back home again. Then I went to the Peru, and I got a job, what I told you last time I told you about it. Half a suit. In Dramana. Oh, yeah. 
in Draman. It was up Draman, right? Doing the robbery. You see that part of there? I told you I took it. Then about two months up there, and come back again. Then we shifted to West Melbourne, to uh, Stanley Street. Where were you in North Melbourne when you returned, when you moved from Maribyrn on? We were in... Uh, Arden Street. Arden Street, yes, yeah, that's right. Arden Street. We, have, we had a, a, a couple of rooms and no bath. <laughs> there was no bath. Oh, we never that spoke now. That's the old days. You know, but, uh, and uh, that's what we had, I think, yeah, to lose. Well, we want to go there because in, it was Melbourne. It's easier for me to look for work, see, than up there. You know, Melbourne Long, you have to walk, you know, a long way. Anyhow, uh, And may I ask, what was the. Like the fact that there would have been a few Maltese in that yes. area, did that was, a lot of was that important to you? Oh, yeah, yes, oh, yes, too. Where we stayed with there was in, a lot of Maltese. Yeah, it was bad, there was a lot of Maltese. Yeah. But did, Maltese. That, did that influence your decision to go? No, there? no, never, oh, no. no, because I only know a few of them, like, you know what I mean, I don't know, but we went there to West Melbourne and then from there. You can walk anywhere there in the city. You know, if you want to keep that money. You can use the walk. You can use the walk. You can use you everything. Was it your aim to get back on the walk? Sure, till, till they set us up. In those days, it was a matter of getting anywhere where you could get work. Back. Work. But that was a real depression. See, I got, uh, I got that job, like, uh, like I told you, for a while. And then we got nothing. Then I got another job in a uh, uh, job in the railway. That's how it was. Yeah, in the railway for a couple of months again. That's all they gave me. But how long were you at Dramana again? In Dramana, about a couple of months. A couple of months. Mm. Then I went to, uh, after a while, you got to the bureau again, and they sent me to the railway. Well, I then. Uh, Couple of months in the railway, uh, and just in North Melbourne Station there, oh, yes. circling the line and take the line off and put the new line. You know what I mean? There. Then were there, were there other Maltese blokes here? No, no. We don't know. It. Oh, there was an old flower block here. There was another Maltese fella. And uh, then we went. Then that's finished. You know, it's all you have to do it because the others will do the other bit, see up there. Then they send me again on the uh, work for the Sasso, for the Dowl. You have to work, do so many hours work for the Dowl, see? I used to go away and you have to see where the zoo is now and where the government house is there in the garden. Dig and do this and do that. And we've done all that, like, uh, and then you'll be off, like you do so many hours, say 100 hours or whatever it is, and then you off again. That's for nothing, they will get the dough. When you work in the railroad, they give you the wages. Then they call me again for, uh, for the railway again, for another couple of months, two or three months, I think it's three months it was. I had to go to Wodonga, the side of Aubrey. Sit there in the railway, in the railway, do the railway. And then we finished there. Was this part of the uh, Sasa or was this? Yes, yeah, but uh, you get paid, you get paid uh, the, the right money. Oh, I see. See, the right money, the railway right. money. Anyhow, then we come uh, to Melbourne again. And as soon as I got to Melbourne, a bloke says to me, Mortis fella, he says, hey, Joe, he says, your number is on top. Top of the list. On the list. He says, and I am next. I said, what for? He said, for the war. See? He said, you better go to the union room. So what year was this now we're talking about? Eh? Uh, hey? What year would it be now? 32? It'll be yeah, about, 32, Gary. It'll be about 32. 
it would be yeah, a bit difficult. That's right. So I heard Eunice. That's right. Eunice was born in 1932. When Eunice was born, to to do was when I went to the to Wadonga there. That's right. When I come back, she was talking. That she was only talking. She was only a few, a little about twelve months no, old. No, is it? Yeah, that's all right. Anyhow, uh, I went to the union room and he said, uh, you're ready to work. And then he gave us the ticket. I got the ticket here, too, somewhere. Doctor. Well, I got the dog as well, though. So where was the uh, union office in those days? Uh, the union office was in Flinders Street. Near Queen Street. Near Queen Street. Ah. Yeah, I think oh, I it's still there. Oh, yeah, it's gone out the door. Yeah. yeah, you know the waterside workers. No, it's not there, there now, is it? Not the... now. I'm saying no. that is. Yeah, that's the blue building, wasn't it? That's right. Mm. Yeah. 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 Blue stone. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That one, and the other one is in Port Melbourne, where the buses go. The buses, uh, the buses are out there now. The type of for the buses. So you were explaining how. You know, you'd come down and return to Melbourne and yeah. that you were number one. Like on the top, like. Yeah. What happened then? And then start working. You go for the pickup and you have to go twice a day for the pickup. What's the pickup? Uh, they p pick you up, the boss come and pick you up. Me, you know, you know, in a, a certain well, area. And there'd be a lot of men there, and the bosses would pick up and they'd say, I want you. You, and you, you, and you, you, you. And that would go from half past seven in the morning. Like eight o'clock there, eight o'clock there till ten o'clock. And yeah. then you go one o'clock again if you don't pick up in the morning till uh, three o'clock. That's if you were on tw a night shift. Or That's why I was hand living there, see? It was only walk, walk. I suppose most of the blokes would have been in that situation, living near the wharves. No, or, no, no, they come no. from all over. The they come place. from all over. But see, we lived there. For one thing, he'd come home for dinner or See, if I'm handy, I come home for lunch. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it's, uh, you know what I mean, if I got the job, well, I go to work and come five o'clock or whatever it is, where I finish that night, that uh, day, or might we have to go eight o'clock tonight, like working at the clock. Nice. It started up again in '32. Mm. Back in the war. Yeah. yeah. About that. Steve at all again? Oh yeah. Yeah, but still working down here, down below, on the war, on the deep sea. D during this time, like when you returned to Melbourne, were you in touch with? other Maltese people? Like, were you part of the Maltese community? No, 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 no. We got, uh, then, then later, later, but not that. Then, uh, the, that time we only was few Maltese there in the, in our union, there was few Maltese on the other union, in the SCAP union. So in the voluntary, call it voluntary, voluntary. And, uh, could, could you tell me, I know it's a long time ago, but do you remember the names of, say, the Maltese who you associated with in 1932? Yes. Who were they? Maltese? Yeah. Jerry, Jerry and uh, Charlie. Jerry Farber. Charlie Farber. Jerry Farber. Farber. They were brothers. Jerry. There was uh, Charlie Rhymer. Who? Charlie. Yeah, yeah. Joyce's husband. Uh, yeah, Joyce, that's all right. Yeah, that was with the scare, with the scare. Yeah. was a Yeah. Yeah. I had uh, Zara. Yeah, Joe, Joe Zara. Zara. And uh, we only was about the real one, Federation one, you know, junior, the real union one, about five men down there in the Maltese. So, so were they, which ones were they? Eh? Was that Zara? Zara, yeah. Was that and Joe Zara? Joe Zara. Joe Zara. Joe Zara. He died now. Charlie Papanin is out too. His name was Father. Father, yes. And his brother come Jerry. with me down. Jerry. Was, Jerry was with me. We got in together, him and I, see? And there was another one. 
I don't remember, you know what I mean, much. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Yeah. Because I only seen him a few times, too, because he was there before me again, that dog. See? Barry, he's a fella that's never really, with the Maltese, most of them, 99%. They were down at pub. They were gambling. They were horse racing. Or cards or anything. Well, I never was. Joe, all, all he wanted was work, home, the family. That's you right. Know. Um, he wasn't one for knocking around with the rest of them. Well, we'll see what I done, what we done then. We got to work. I start working. I couldn't get my job for start because nobody knows you down there. You know what I mean? You can't come oh. you, And you know that block, you'll pick him up, not me. The because you did not pick you out. The form, yes. yes. And then... Excuse me, Joe, we've run out of time. This is the continuation of the continuation of the interview with Joe Malak. It's the 18th of, no of September 1984. The interview is taking place in North, in uh, Ascot Vale, Victoria. So you weren't really part of the Maltese community? No, 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 no. Just uh, yeah, allow and could I, you know, talking like that to them, and, uh, and they talk to me like that too. See, and uh, then see, finish up the job. Yeah. Then when I few couple of weeks after, couple of weeks after, we. Uh, you get to know, know, know the blokes. Not only you know, the formers know you. Yeah. Say so you might, I uh, might come with you and you'll find out that I'm all right. Yeah. Well, you always pick me up. See, everybody pick you up. You will pick me up, I was working with that. He picked me up, they all picked me up. And uh, that's got plenty of jobs. And then I had some money and bought that house in Hawke Street. See? When did you buy that? Was that 33 or? $33 was bought in that house. Eunice was seven, nine. Eunice was nine. No. She's 52 now. The, the There's no difference for, say, 52, yeah. 52 is? 52. Yeah, I went and I got the law solicitor and he says to me, look, he says, uh, you get that price, he says, I'll take you to the bank and you get as much money as you like. So said that yes, much the uh, REAC. Well, he was working for Welsh. What is that, solicitor? He wasn't a solicitor. But uh, close to it. This is the 1940s. Yeah. When I got the place, I, yeah. I had few quid then, see? You worked on the wall. Still working on the wall. Yeah, still working still on the wall. And uh, that's why I bought the first house, see? I went there, we wanted the house, we liked it, and uh, we got it. But I never had enough money to pay it full. Well, I went, uh, this fella took me to the bank. And the bank manager gave me what I wanted. Oh, yeah. Then, we shifted in the place and everything. And a couple of months after, I went to pay the full amount I know. I owe. I had the money. See? I worked up that I got the money to pay it. And uh, the bank manager, he went mad at me. He says, what for? He says, what? He says, suppose something wrong with you. I said, no, I said, I can afford it now. He says, only 3%. Yes, the house in those days was 450. 450, I paid for it. 450 pounds. Quid, yes. Anyhow, uh, what sort of wages would you be on in those days? Well, there you are. The, the, the books the there. And so the, the, the old book. The, the old book, yeah. The old book will tell you. 
Tea. But I never went boozing or anything. Joe, 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 I had a bet now and then. Right, <sighs> so, well, don't. Uh, I, I can check up on that yeah. later. But, yeah. uh, mm. Before, uh, uh, earlier today, you told me about the uh, working conditions. Yeah, well, the conditions. working condition down there was no working condition. Working, no smoke or no nothing. Nothing at all, not even water. So somebody might go for the water, for a can of water, get a bucket of water, have a drink. You get the second time they look at you. See, one block will go and get it like that. And uh, no, nothing at all. Now they got hot water, showers if you want them. <laughs> they got everything, cold water, toilets, and everything. When did things start to improve? Oh, the water, in the last, last water. What, what was the, what, how did things improve? What, what was improved the, everything. The wharf, for start, the wharf used to be all timber, flooring. They concrete, was it? They concrete everywhere, you can say. Then they put toilets, they put everything, fresh water, you can go and make a cup of tea. You know, in your time, smoke time, you go and make a cup of tea, because I got a lot like that then after. And we used to work, like uh, now, I work a lot of times with the American because the American ships, the transport used to come here with their cargo. Every transport boat come from America will get the troops on it and the cargo would have to take, fight with uh, you know, eat and everything, as every day. So, so, uh, we used to, uh, if they going to stop here, we used to discharge everything from there and they used to help us. Because we, we was busy working day and night, you know what I mean? Like you, you might go on a boat, you work in, say, seven nights, go on all the time. Not day, like seven nights. Because a lot of times I went there, because he won't tell you, like, eight o'clock this morning or anything. And then he'll say, all right, nine o'clock tonight, or eight o'clock tonight. See? And you might go 12 nights. See, you know, to finish that boat, see? And then, they might transfer you from that boat to this one because they're short of labour. See, they do it. So the, uh, out, what were the hours of work generally? When the, sh when the ship finished. The, Sometimes uh, it work. I've saw it in work, Barry, start five o'clock. Eight o'clock, uh, Friday night. Friday night, work all day, sat in, come home Sunday at five o'clock. Five o'clock in the morning. And they stopped. Right through. And on, the, on, the, on the Dutch boats, what they call the flower boats, I saw him go to work down Victoria Dock at 8 o'clock in the morning and come home at 5 and he could get his overalls and they'd stand up and like they had a man in them with perspiration and a flower. You know, you'd just swear. But I... So when did those sort of things come to an end? It was after the war? Just round about war time. When things, well, the men weren't about to and be dropped, good. and uh, they had to have conditions for better see them. Men were called up for the war, and of course they never had the men there. I've been called, I've been called to go. Yeah, what happened? What happened when I went to, uh, they examined me, all right. When I went down to see the big fella, he says, how long have you been on the war? I said, 15 years. Oh, he says, you better go there yeah. because we want men there too. See? Yes. They pushed me off. They sent for four and sent everybody. <clears throat> and what, what about the difference between, like, you were a stevedore rather than a wharf? No, it's not different, really. Like, but, but, but you early... It's no different, like, but one, one they could the the work in the, the deep sea boat, we call them. Like That's the big boats. Yeah, overseas. And these, the, the other side, the water side, side work as a warfare. Just on the wharf, we work on the wharf that time. There was another group, what they call the coalies. Oh, they yeah. Used to, uh, that's only uh, the, uh, do the coal boats. Do the, the coal boats. See, yeah, that's, that's got nothing to do with us. That's the, the coal three different groups. Yeah. But there's only that, uh, the stevedore and the warfare. And uh, what? 
sort of work would you actually do? Like earlier, you were telling me about the uh, the, the, uh, the weights that were carried and the uh, yeah wool, the wool and the uh, flour. I sometimes I used to make a freezer. We do all the freezer. I used to work with the company, the, the Victoria Suvatoran company. She got all the bloody flour and and freezer too. See, English boats and the, the Dutch boats. This was in the and Japanese boats. The late thirties. We're talking about now. Hey? What what period of time are you talking of? Was this before the war? No, after, no, after the war, that. This is 1935. You've got this book started from, this financial book. The, the red one? Blue one. No, the blue one. The red one is the main one. No, but what I mean is you were working down there in 1935. That's when you paid 10 shillings to yeah. September. Well, you was working there in 1935. You were working there, I suppose, from about 19... 34, 35 is when you start continuous on the wall. Well, yes, could be, yeah. Yes, properly. Properly, yes. Yes. Could be. So it's 35, 36, 37. And there's 39, right down 39. 1940 to March 1940. Mm. 1941, 41. 42 years. 42 years. Like with the uh, when I joined to the to the uh, when I finished till I retired. It's 1928. That's the old one. That's, that's the, the one. one. Yes, that's it's the old. 1928. That's the main one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, July the 19th, 1928. Yeah, but I never I never worked then. I got that, I got in, and then no, uh, no work, yeah. because of strike. Well, that was in 1928. Yeah, that's so what the strike. strike must have been. Yeah. Then you got here, 1939, 19... What, 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 what? 1939. I should have more books in there, but I don't know. So what were the, uh, the weights of the, the, the things you'd carry? Carried? Yeah, you I told me before, so yeah. you it's one of them tight. Well, the one was a double dump. Yeah, yeah, the double dumps, I couldn't tell you, it'll be about, uh, well, well Baila will it be 500, well, it'll be 10, 10 hundred, it'll yeah. be a thousand, Fair. double double, double dumps, double two, two, uh, two, two, bar, two bars and two one, together. don't talk two together, in my word. then uh, the flower used to be the heaviest, heavier than the wheat, see? We used to, like I told you, the bags of flour, dumpers I call them, and uh, 192, 94 pounds a bag. And how and many people took like for carry each bag? Is there 500, like two on, the, two, uh, two on the stage here, and two on the stage here, and three carry or four carry one on the stage, it can be one on the stage, four carry this side, the swing, and the other four carry that wing. And you go, uh, you have to make a step to uh, to fill her up. Yeah. That's the Indian, boat, the British Indian boat, they call them. And uh, we had the freezer. Freezer you might go for uh, two weeks on a boat to fill her up with the butter. Even eggs on the bay boat, we used to load a lot of eggs from here to go to England. Which boat was it? Bay boat, they call it. The bay boat, sorry, mm. yes. Used to be four, uh, the four of them. Bay. The largest bay, bay, uh, yes, Aston Bay. Uh, Jarvis. Jarvis, yes. And another one, another one got, got the, the sunk, I think. Jarvis Bay. Mountain Bay, Morton Bay or something. Bay. Yeah. We used to do, that company I worked for used to go, uh, that the Victoria Stuvatore company. See, so I worked there for a, with, with them thing for about seven or eight years, with the same formula, you know, all the time. Not the same formula, because if that formula go holiday, well, the other one picked no. me up. So, yeah, 
the, the same for uh, down at the fort, and about the, from the same company. See. Listen. What was it? Uh, sorry. Go on. Uh, what was it? Uh, dangerous work. Like, did work? Did you receive any uh, work injuries yourself? Oh, it was a few, in <laughs> few injuries. I got that broken toes. Oh, yes, but nothing That's serious. not uh, literally serious. I never had no serious work uh, since I finished work. <laughs> Mm. But how, how did you break your toes? Toes, so there was a big pallet of eight bales of wool. And the, the, the tray was here, and the heap of wool was here, here so I, and they dropped some wool from up there on the pallet, and they got me under the, on my toes. See? Well, I broke these two toes here on the right one. And the other one, that one you love, the doctor love what I told you. That one there is a horse on it. Uh -huh. We used to have horses uh -huh. to put the trucks in. Uh -huh. See, you know, you land the things on the truck, and then you pull it in the shed, and then you undo it. You know, put it on the stacks. And this broke, this driver was drunk. You know, that's yeah. what I have to do with us, is they hire to drive the horse. And I done something like that to keep us straight or something, and he pulled the horse. See, and got me right on the bloody, uh, on, on the little toe there. And I kept working, that was another company, union company, no, the uh, United Company. Then I said... Uh, this would have been in the 30s, I suppose. It will be a bit after the 30s. And uh, I kept working like. I seen the seen it like I had a look, I took the books off and uh, put it on again, worked, finished the job there. I went to Port Melbourne on another job with this company, the United Company. And I says to the former, I said, hey, I said, you remember, you remember when that blood, the horse ran over me there? He says, yes, he said, what's wrong? I said to them, he still saw it swelling. I said, I showed it to him. He says, why did you go to the doctor? See? That was a fortnight after I got hurt, hurt the toe. Anyway, he said, uh, I went to the doctor. <laughs> and the doctor, he said, how long is he done it? I said, the, nearly three weeks ago. He said, you mean to tell me you worked on that for three weeks? I said, yes, I did. He said, God, he says, you have to do... Uh, get parachute boots, he says, put a bit of leather underneath like that, underneath this, keep your toe up. He says, you can't do nothing else. And that's what I had to do. He laughed a like, man, because I was working three weeks without a, a report or anything like. Were you organised in gangs in hey? those days? Or were they... First we wasn't, then after we made a gang. I was a gang leader for uh, years and years. Hmm. Gang 78, I think it was. Yeah. When did the gangs come in? I think we got them in the war time. Were they, uh, when they, when there were gangs, were they, did you find nationalities mixed? Oh, yeah, the well, uh, yes, yes. Or you yes. have had a Maltese gang? Yeah. No, 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 mix of up. I had a more Australian by Another more, one more piece, another more piece is that too now. Paul and Joe, Paul Attard. No, Joe Attard and Paul, what Paul's name the other night? Paul, Paul uh, used to live in your apartments. Paul um, used to be my mate all the time. Uh, little Paul, Yeah. Oh, I forget it. Paul. It's funny how you know, people mm. just suddenly, suddenly yeah. comes. Joe Watt, I know, Joe Watt, oh, no. he's there too. He was a great friend of uh, Paul Sides. Yeah. Uh, he used to live in Paul Sides' yeah, shop. Paul Sides. Upstairs. Oh, Stella Joe. And uh, he's dead, and uh, Paul. See, we call him with names down there. What so was his Oh, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Don't worry, Yeah. Well, I know it's Paul the first name. I had him, I well, had no him. gang leaders, or...? Eh? 
Without gang leaders? Yeah, yeah. No, I was the leader because he can't read that far. Uh, Paul and Joe, Joe, Joe what I can't read. Well, I used to, you know, when, when, when you work in there, you got like, say you got tea, discharging tea. Well, you must be your, your ten on the wharf, and uh, you get about ten different marks. One is A or G or D. I already have to put them all G, one place, D, one place, or like that. And you have to tell them. Like, you put it there, then I put it here. Say like that, and tell them what to do. But the other was all right, all the Australians and English. I had the Italian blouse. Yes, I put it on. Well, when did you become the gangster? Oh, that's you. I think it was the war time. We made them gang leader. Uh, After they stopped picking you up from the um, bullring, yeah. then they started on the gangs, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. They made up gangs. Yeah. So you knew they part of Barry. They'd go into this area. And they'd go into this area and they'd say, you and you and yeah, you and come with me. So you got to leave any yes. shot. But, after but then that, later on, there was how many men in the gang? I had 17. 17 men in the game. If I have to look after, if they, if I anybody's sick or anything to pick up extra bloke, so you have to tell them. Yeah. And uh, I used to wear, uh, my, my gang was 78. Yeah, gang 78. 78 I had for a long, long time. And uh, I got them all on the book. I got a little book with all the names. Say, if somebody's drinking that she's not coming, like he's sick, well, I have to play that fella. You know, I'll tell him to pick up one extra man. So he have extra men there too. So you had a gang of 17. 17 and men. a couple were Maltese. Yeah, three, uh, three Maltese were was in it. Me and another two. Two goes over one Maltese. <laughs> <laughs> the others were a mixture of Maltese. Mix up. Italian, Italian. I had Italian, I had Polish, anything. Any, any, any. Oh, just, he had 17 men, well, yeah, you want the 17 men. Uh, the, the, uh, the gang, the gang will be like I got uh, for number one, I got 17. You were number two, you got 17. And the other one got 17 to every head. Some on the wharf and some on the boat, see? Half on the boat and half on the, on the wharf. Were you affected at all by the the uh, banning of the pig iron, you know, when the union that time, banned yes, the yes. pig iron. Yeah, Japan. pig iron and bob. Japan. They call it pig iron and bob. Uh, yes. Menzies. 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 Was that only up in Sydney or no, all, all over? All over. They used to call, see, the, the iron used to go from Sydney to Japan. What they said, what they done it for, they used to get the pig iron to Japan. And they told them that things will come on us. They'll come back to them. Come back to them. They come up. If, we, if it wasn't the Americans, they was exactly going through, save Australia, and Australia has gone. Mm. Because Australia had nothing. He had no bloody plans or anything. Well, See? Australia, they, they, Menzies, Menzies had, do you know what they call uh, Brisbane line? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was marked already where Japanese is going to take. And Menzies, he's dead now, him had the plan, the submarine ready to take him to, to America. Him and his sons. He was going to clear away from He Australia. was going to clear away. And that's what they... Pig Iron Bob and Brisbane Line. They told him that that, that iron you send there, the Pig Iron and stuff. And uh, they used to send all the scrap iron and drums. We used to load them because the, that company I work used to load all that Japanese. She had she was the, the biggest company you can say. What was the name of the company? Victoria Sivatora Company. The Stevedore Company. Yeah. Melbourne Stevedore Company. Victoria Sivatora. Yeah. And uh, did you? So what happened? Eventually, the union called meetings about this. Oh yes, a strike. Sorry. And you refused to load. Mm, that's right. And your gang was part of that strike? Oh, I have to, everybody. everybody, so everybody all the union, all the union goes together. Yeah. Like they do anywhere else, you know, the union goes all one. When it's one, one. 
were there strong feelings about it among the members of the union? Oh, yes. Not with the like Menzies, the way he done it. Well, if it wasn't, if it wasn't, if it, if it wasn't for American, see, they sent to Britain. They sent to Britain for help here. And England couldn't come here at all. They couldn't send anything here. They had the trouble there. See? And they told them that. And they was going to send to America, and the American fleet just uh, happened to come on the Indian Ocean, is what you call it? The Pacific. The Pacific or something. There. And they got the order and got the Japanese bucket. Yes. See? It would have been our Australia, like I said, like like uh, England. If Russia never come up for Ger for Germany from that side, England gone. Yeah, yeah, sure. So the same bloody thing right here. And during the war itself, uh, were you aware of what was happening in Malta? What were the Maltese people in Australia oh, we receiving letters? We see news, news, yeah, news, yeah, yeah. news and news. Yeah. On the television, I tell you all the news. Well, we uh, on the, not the television, on the wireless, like on the wireless, I tell you the news and everything. In Malta, they had it bad, but in Gozo, no, eh? Because Gozo, Gozo is uh, you, when you went there yourself, it's built up now. That time was uh, our house here, might be two houses here, four houses here, and that is all open gardens and everything like that, see? But now you can read on that thing. They got every black thing there. But, uh, the reason I asked, I uh, oh, believe yes, yes, that yes. during the war, the groups like the you know the Maltese Social Society in Melbourne, they Paul Paris and that group, I, I, and Captain Kermy, yeah. that they uh, had fundraising activities and collected clothing and items like that to send to Malta. Is that right? I never used anything. I never used anything. With your Ralph Society for one thing. Who told you that? Around and that. Did they tell you that? They were lucky to be bloody well I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. 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 i will tell you what i will tell you what i will tell you and he was sort of helping the social, like, I won't say social, he was trying to do something like Borges is doing. Yeah, the Maltese together, I know. Like this here, and there wasn't. Well, the next thing, Eunice was about 15, and then they started uh, dances and picnics. Well, you know... Jimmy Parnas was one of them that was on the committee trying yeah. to uh, keep it going. You know, uh, you know the England. England was worse than Malta. Because I had my sister, Mike, Mike's mother in, in Malta, Jessie, and I, that's my sister, and they, um, Nina was in England. Well, we used to send stuff to England to here every, every month, I think, is it? We used to send the parcel, uh, yeah, sugar, and food, food we used to send, yeah? And uh, I don't know if your father, your father was in the, what do you call it? He was in, in the Air Force. In the Air Force then. But he is more to Nina than anything else. Well, Nina was more like a mother. Yeah, I know. Then, Jesse, we used to send, Jesse asked her for that. She said, no, we can't get anything here. More they can get the things, and in England couldn't. That was during the war. During the war. So she was lucky, Jessie, because she had Mick in the Navy. Yeah. And he could get something from the Navy. And then Uncle Mick was all right because yeah. he was in the Navy. He was in the Navy too. He around and get different things for his own family, yeah. not saying for anybody else. But that's what it was. Like, yeah. like I was a mortal myself in the First World War. I used to go to the YMCA, get the English blogs, like the, you know, what they call the red cap, the policemen like, and uh, they used to send me to the YMCA, get them uh, afternoon tea or something, and if I want matches or anything, I get them from them myself. Yeah. See, they get it. It's just a matter of watching, I don't know, mm. you. Yes. 
see, that's the I use when I was a kid. We used to send home food parcels to Nina in England, and uh, you know, jumpers, I used to stand in jumpers, and that they weren't very good, but they were covering for the yeah. boys, you know. So, but you don't remember any like, meetings of Maltese, the Maltese community? We, we weren't that strong here, uh, no. we weren't that strong. Half of them were married to Australians or living with Australians. And in Stanley Street, when we were in Stanley Street, there was a row of us. There was Alleyules, and then there was us, and Dallas, and Ferruges, Seenies, and all that lot there. We were all a young lot of yeah, people like with children, very little money. And there wasn't anything like that. When Paul Parris started having his social affairs, Parnassus, then his cousin, had a big van, and it'd be 1st of November or during November, we'd all, Joe Parnassus would get his van, and about 20 of us would all get up to Sunbury for the festival up there. The kids would all be marching, and that, that was the beginning of it. Mm. Then they now, started... What, what, sorry for interrupting, but what year are you talking of, like, it's important for me to know uh, the period approximately. Mm. Now, approximately uh, 30, 30, 30, between 39 and 40. Yeah, Father Chanter was the head priest up there. Yes, Father Chanter, he died and, too. Uh, he sort of, in fact, he's buried up at Sunbury now. And uh, we turned around now that, well then, when Eunice was about 14, they started these dances at St. Patrick's Hall in Burke Street, and that's how they all sort of got together more. Mm -hmm. Hazel Messia and Eunice and Dinny and a lot of them, we'd have a supper and get a few bob like that. I think Mrs. Paris told Eunice a few weeks ago that she's got some of the receipts. She says at the dance this year, she says there's a, re uh, a receipt there got where they never had enough money. And Correct. Paul was four pounds, nine and sixpence, short of what to cover the expenses. And they used to have the dancers down there. Well, we were all like, with the Australian and Maltese married, and we'd all be sort of gathering around, you know. And that's it. But that all fell through. We'll finish up and now. And there are we try in a narrow building there so opposite was, Santa Gaston. Yes. And yes. Bear Street. First was St. Patrick's. Oh, First was St. Patrick's. And then there was the railway building opposite. There are right buildings there. Yeah. Yeah. Opposite the church. Oh. Near near Spencer. That's where we used to uh, Unity Hall. Unity Hall. Unity Hall, Hall. that's it. Unity Hall. That's it. That's where we used to get the last lot of dances. Last dances. And then that But uh, yeah, yeah, I that's tell that's you what's happened with that. That is the Morty Soccer Club in That's North true. Melbourne. And they got more blokes there, drinks and all, see? Yeah. And uh, that wasn't allowed drinks, you know, only no. soft drink so or anything like that. Family, family, family turn up, see? And there they don't pay anything, and here they had to pay a bit. We had Eunice working there all the time, she was working, helping now. Uh, <coughs> Eunice used to go there yeah. and make yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, you know, Jonas used to be on the boat and everything, and she'll tell you. She knows all their names. All the names from uh, Brisbane to West Australia. Yes. They